right, welcome back to the I'm There podcast, guys. I'm your host, Freyway. I'm here with my co-host, Kenny, and we have two no. special guests with us today. We have returning to the podcast, Majora, a.k.a. Cheyenne, friend hey, everybody. And guest to the podcast, and we also have Bill, who is a friend of Kenny's and Cheyenne's. Uh, nice to meet you, Bill. We will be talking about Cyberpunk Edge Runners, the new Netflix show that recently came out that has been trending and going crazy lately. Um, I'm sure that you guys have seen or heard about it, seen memes about it and stuff like that. Uh, I pretty much got coerced into watching it because I hate being left out. I am one of those people who suffers from FOMO. And so I just when I see too many, too many people talking about the same thing, I'm just like, God damn it. Even though I'm not interested in this, I'm going to watch it anyway. And that's pretty much what happened to me. Same thing with Squid Game. Same thing with like it's funny because you wanted to be a part of the thing, you know? Yeah, it's funny. I was uh, so I was actually pretty excited to watch it just because I thought it looked cool. And then I was going to message Frazier like, hey, you should watch this new anime on Netflix because, uh, you know, it looks pretty good. We can do a podcast episode on it. And then I think like the day I was thinking about messaging him, he messaged me. And pretty much said exactly what he just said. Like, oh, everybody's talking about it, and I have to it's watch it. It's so, up, man. It's everybody's yeah. watching it. It's gotten really big. Uh, but yeah. How do you guys feel about it? Like, who who hates it? Who likes it? Right. Who loves it? I, I'm just going to – I'll just throw this out there right now because I don't want to bring the mood down a bit. All no, right. no. It's fine. If, if we need I, I, I don't. Who... I don't hate it, right? I don't hate it. Okay. But I really, 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 really don't like it. I like it at all. Man. That is like so. I, so, based on a little bit that I've seen in like the messages, mm. I, I, you know, I was able to put together that you didn't like it. Yeah, and I, I watched it all ten episodes, right. and I'm honestly shocked that you, shocked, I can't believe man. you don't like it. I know, I dude, think because I fucking love cyberpunk. Like I think it's a you love cyberpunk, but I also and... think I also just think it's. I think it's really good, and I think the setting, mm. the feel, the mood of it, like, the mood of the show is, like, I like a lot. And it, honestly, I was looking at it, and I was like, man, this almost makes me want to play Cyberpunk 2077. I, maybe you should. If I knew, ah, it's got a lot of problems. I mean, I know <laughs> the pro a lot of them have yeah. maybe been fixed, but... Well, let's, too. let's talk about that real quick, but I guess, before we move on, uh, so I'll just say, for me personally, I like it i don't love it i'm in like that area where i would say this show was a solid 7.5 for me um, Let, let's say let's say five is completely and utterly average where would you put it out of seven, 10 7, 7. 5 7. 5. yeah because okay. i think it's above average i think it does some things really well and i think it mm. i think it does some things poorly uh the main thing for me that it does poorly and i kenny and i talked about this off off camera mm. but it's the pacing it's just too fast yeah, like, yeah it's pretty it, fast it is it's and fast. that's the that's the issue with it being 10 episodes i think that this would have been a perfect 24 episode anime um but i you know 24 episodes like a lot of anime actually are it gives them time to develop the characters more it gives it time to where people die you actually can feel something for the character because you know them a bit more i just feel mm. like in 10 episodes if everyone is going to die you know spoiler alert but like if everyone is going to die 10 episodes is just not enough time especially when they're 20 minutes each for me to be attached to any character like i am not attached to pretty much any of the characters in cyberpunk edge runners and i do like the characters but i'm not attached to them to the point where their deaths mean something to me when i see it so for me that is a, a a big issue with it but i think it does things well like animation i think that the music choices are pretty good like i like that whole jazzy feel and like that punk vibe that it has sometimes um storyline is whatever like it's, it's the action is the action sequences look really nice like the choreography for that type of stuff is like really well done and it to me it has like a almost like a cowboy bebop feel i was all right, saying all right all righty gentlemen. i love it i love it Let's i love it, it down a bit I, all no, right I legit i swear to god bebop. i was i it really does i was watching this with another person and while we were watching it we both like pretty much said it almost the same time like hey this has like an older anime feel yeah, like it 90s reminds 90s. me of cowboy bebop this it's it's the setting it's the feeling it's the music it's the overall vibe it just has like a it just has a feel to it they're that first also of all, taking I, odd jobs it's like a, a motley crew right you got okay. this motley crew of people who are doing all these random things every episode it's almost like an anthology and like how cowboy bebop is where every episode is a little different even though there's one overarching cohesive story going on but like episodes they're just like kind of doing things right they're just like this is what we're doing today we're going to take these jobs we're going to get these credits or whatever they call their money their currency and at ease and then Euro, i feel like every episode, i feel like every episode could literally end with 
see you later space cowboy like i feel like <laughs> if that was at the end of every episode it actually just wouldn't even be out of character it would have been, been awesome at the end just to see like see you later edge runner or something like that i'm i'm gonna have to say no to all of you <laughs> like i'm not trying to hear you know i'm just not trying to hear any of this i like, think here's it's another thing though. i think it's very inspired i think that for example one of like the big one of like the things that carried on from Cowboy Bebop is like you're going to carry that weight. And when I got to the last episode, like that was the thing that came to mind. Like you call me fat. Like you're going to. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> your camera's off for a reason. Your camera. Yeah, it is. It is. I'm fucking. Oh god, I'm hideous. But you're like um... the great mighty poo. But uh, <laughs> but no, I mean. I feel like, especially when I got to the end, like there was a lot of weight in uh, the things that were happening, and yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, I'll go into more specifics, you know, in a bit. Well, real quick, real quick, it, if, but... if everybody could, like, let's say, <clears throat> like, because usually people say like seven is average. If if five was completely average, five is what, average. What would each one of us give it out of? So like, I I'd, give, I'd it give it like a strong like eight point five. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what what another, another, another scale possible. system. I don't, I don't, I hate to throw another scale system at you. So like. This one's from my other friend. Uh, he go he goes saying things like one to eight good and then one to eight bad. For me, it would be like what? probably a seven good and then like a two bad and the two bad. Is okay, I get what you're I saying. See. I see. Yeah. For a second, okay. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, I didn't understand yeah. it until you actually said it at the end. Like, <laughs> yeah, like you're yeah. saying like out of everything that's good and then like you're you're also scoring what's bad about it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. I right. I have a seven point five. Bill has like our eight point five. Uh, Kenny has. I probably, I probably. Um, I mean, I'll, it's really fresh, and it's always hard to grade things when it's fresh. But yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm somewhere between a seven or an eight. Like it's either okay. an eight or a seven. Yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna say it's a seven point five. <laughs> I think like given a week or two, I'll settle on a seven or an eight. But yeah. that's most likely what my score is going to be: either a seven or an eight. Yeah. Oh man, and, I feel bad. And Cheyenne, your right. score. <laughs> uh, so like five is like completely. I, I would give it like a three or a four. Oh my god. I, I, I personally, I think it was a really bad anime. Just okay. Terrible. Can we terrible. Start, can we go through yeah. the things that this animates? So let's start with animation. All right. How All right. does everyone feel about the animation? And I pretty awesome. pretty pretty damn good. Um, I, I've me. I've I've seen worse, but I have seen better. Okay, that's but, like, how I feel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like there's times like there's times where it's really fucking stylized and it's badass. Like yes. I think it's the one of the scenes that stuck with me the longest, even though it was like it was just kind of like a throwaway scene. It was the very beginning where there's like, the guy like there's like ten dudes or like fucking cops or whatever. Yep. And he like warps around all ten of them and like shoots yeah. each of them in the back of the head. Yeah. Like that was like cool as fuck. And like there's things like that that stick with me. Like I think the this the the art style is like fucking like a like an eight point five out of ten. Like it's fucking well, insane. That's what I, I I think to piggyback off what you're saying, Cheyenne is. I think the style of it is so so. Like I think the animation is good. It's not like the Demon Slayer movie. That's animation. exactly what I was gonna say. It's but, never nothing is Demon Slayer, which is really annoying that Demon Slayer even exists at this point because everything that's animated for the rest yeah, of yeah. history is going to be compared to the anime because compared of how exceptional yeah. it is. As far so, as like, that means I gotta watch that. I don't really know what the fuck it is, but it I just looks beautiful. Yeah. It's the most beautiful anime you will ever see in your life. Like it is so it, outrageous. Wow. But go ahead, Kenny. The animation isn't Demon Slayer, but. I think the animation is good, but then aside from that, I think the style is so clean. Like I love the style of the entire show. Yeah. For example, you mentioned the with the cops and like that slow motion. Essentially, yeah. he was using the Sandy, and then yeah, we get yeah. to see that 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 effect throughout the series because yeah, uh, David. Um, but another thing is just I really love. I think it's episode one when yeah, he is, first yeah. starts seeing Lucy. Oh and like the way they enter, like he kind of like sees her hair, and you just see like her hair on a black screen. Like the way they did some of that weird stuff, I thought was cool. You're like, right. I remember the first time you see Lucy, you don't even know who she is. She doesn't have a name. She's not a character yet, but he just notices her. Her aesthetic, her animation, everything about that was very beautiful to me. And I don't use that word loosely. Like I really like when things are just aesthetically pleasing to the eyes. And to piggyback off of what you're saying about Lucy in particular, where I think the animation is like strongest is in all of the little love scenes between David and Lucy's, particularly the first one they had on the moon is fucking so good looking to me. Like I just really, yeah. really like that like first it. time where they had yeah, that fake nice. moon landing. 
And like, I thought that was cool. Even the helmets, how the helmets are reflective, and you can see it was like the helmets are CG basically. They look like they're not even animated. Like they like they're just full on CG helmets. That whole thing where they kind of hug each other, and she talks about how she really wants to go to the moon one day, and like she hugs up on them. I really love that shot, and that shot's used in a lot of wallpapers. If you just type in Cyberpunk Edge Runner wallpapers and stuff like that, like it's yeah. totally one of the like more iconic scenes of the entire thing. But I will say, as much as I loved those like lovey dovey moments where the, they it's like very cinematography like all about that um some when i was first watching it i'm gonna be honest episode one i was staring at it and i was kind of like uh this doesn't look like a 2022 anime to me like it kind of just like a step down from like a lot of things that i've been seeing recently but that's kind of something i liked about it is it felt old like yeah blatantly. something about it felt old but in to me in a good way like i really like nostalgic almost yeah old feeling of it. yeah and what like, i was gonna I, say about that is episode one i was looking at it like this doesn't look that good to me and that's that was my brain comparing it to what i had recently watched which is like vv fluoride's eye song uh demon slayer like all of these crazy it looking anime right that are all 2022 and like everything's just everyone's going every studio is going ham and so as i was watching i was like oh this doesn't look that good and then as i kept watching it as i'm getting through the episodes i get to like episode three and i'm used to it now and I start to realize, like, this actually just looks good. It's just that it's very stylized, right? Like, it's yeah, yeah, like yeah. people who who see something cell shaded and they're like, oh, that doesn't look good to me. But then after you deal with cell shaded something, like a game that's cell shaded for a while, you start to appreciate it for what it is. Like, you start to like yeah. it, like Tales of Symphonia or like it's Beautiful like, Joe. It's like everybody's like introduction to cell shading is probably Wind Waker. And like everybody, yeah. they're like, what the fuck's going on with that game? It's really weird. But then you just, you're like, wow, this is an amazing. After also, a while, like, you start to like get Wind Waker to aged really well in yes. terms of graphics, I think. So yeah. I feel like the longer I watched Ed Run Edge Runners, I started to fall in love with the animation because I realized this is like a very, very stylish. Like a lot of things that they do, for example, like Kenny mentioned, every time he used the Sandy, that effect, I got used to like just seeing that effect. The cyber psychosis when the eyes start shaking. Oh, yeah. The cyber psychosis looks so cool. Another thing on the Sandy, the one one of the scenes that I thought was awesome is there's like an android that also seems to have a Sandy uh, equip. So it's like after the little time skip, I think it's like episode six. And so he's going and he's fighting this guy and he's like in his slow motion mode. And then the, the robot is able to react to him in slow motion. And so you see him, like, jump over the robot's head and, like, try to shoot him in the back, and it's all in slow motion. And then they kind of zoom it out and then show you it in real time. Oh, right. It's, like, right. It's like three it's frames, but it looks so Yeah, I remember cool. that. Yeah. I, mean, I really thought that was cool, cool too, actually. Yeah. yeah, so animation, I think, is actually fine. Um, it might be, again, to people who are used to just watching current anime and stuff like that, at first, you might look at it and be like, oh, this is not exactly it. But I think that if you just continue watching it, you'll slowly start to appreciate like some of the things that they do. Again, it's not like it will never be Demon Slayer, but most things aren't. So if Demon Slayer is a 10, right? And like, I don't know, something really bad, like I, a lot of anime also at the same time are just not very well animated. But like, let's say Demon Slayer is a 10 on a scale of one to 10. I would say that this is probably like an eight for me. Like, I think it actually looks really nice. And the longer it went on, I really started to like sure. it. In terms of the animation. Just like animation, just like how okay. things look and just how fluid. I, I always you. look at how fluid things move, too. Like, how, like, people's, like, uh, the choreography on the fights, like, when they punch or when they kick. Like, how does that actually look? Is it just still frame? Because you know how, I don't know if you've ever seen an anime called Sayuki. But I used to love it. But now yeah, when, I, yeah. when I watch Sayuki and Get Backers <laughs> now, they don't age well because their fights are just them. They'll punch and it'll just be like a still animation. Oh, yeah. punch. Kenny got sure. me in the Sayuki back when we were like fucking like 13, man. Yeah. I was like, we were I obsessed love Sayuki, with Sayuki. But every fight scene is just like, oh, it's, it's bad. a still it's like, image. Like seven front, like, it's a still yeah. image on like a, a line background. Yes. It's like the zoom lines in the background uh, and a still yeah. image. That's every fight scene. It's so bad, I always man. look for stuff like that, like to see if they cheap cheapened out on the animation because I always, you know, I always think about like, what's the budget? You can tell what the budget is. As soon as they start using too many stills, it's like yeah this is some bullshit yeah, but there, real quick i think it was maybe like episode one where i didn't even know what the fuck the the sand def skit again it, it, was, the fuck? it was episode i think was it was episode two no it was one it was one and it was one and it was the it, scene it where froze. go ahead yeah go ahead it was like it was like he was looking at it or something or it showed his back i don't remember right, it but was, i thought the anime froze I was it, like, Yo, he's holding his mom's scene? jacket with the sand devastan like taped to the back of it and it wasn't it was like barely even a slow zoom in and it was just like 
a 20 frame scene and dude, it, was it was like staring at it. it was like dude, <laughs> I, I legit i was like yo did your thing freeze because me and bill watched it together so, yo, did yeah. it freeze for you and i was like yo that they, they they really milked that still frame do you guys they, remember they that? Really, yeah, that's it that's it happened about. again like a few episodes yeah, later it, it, was, it was staring at like, it was staring at uh david's face like his eye yeah. for like I know exactly what I'm talking about. 47 <laughs> seconds. It was so long. long. It was like, what is this Dude. there? So how do you guys feel about the animation overall? Like, what would you say? I, I think... I mean, I, I don't watch too many animes. Um, so I can't really, like, reference. But I, I would give it, like, an 8. Yeah. Like, I, I've seen some, like, clips of some, of some animes. And, like, some things were, like, really bad. Like, I remember one scene from... I'm not sure if it was like the Berserker movie or the anime, but it's him like walking away from somebody, and it's just like this really like jagged, skippy thing, and it looked yeah. really bad. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. for me, I think for me, it's like it was like inconsistent. Like I, I, I enjoyed it, but I wasn't like there were like outside of some of the stylized moments. Like I was like, oh, that was cool, that was slick, whatever. Yeah. But I wasn't the art style. I'm like, I, I really enjoyed because it's it is like cyberpunk the 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 franchise or whatever but i i wasn't i wasn't really drawn in one direction like i was i was more like at middle of the road like eh, like it was it was all right like a my, my favorite kinda... aspect of like the whole anime was how close they stuck with the universe yeah like and, and like stuck with the universe stuck with the game like the hacking straight from the game yeah like all the HUD elements calls, straight from the game. The, oh, the like background that. soundtrack straight from the game. See, I knew nothing about. I've never played the game, so for me, what you guys are saying is actually really pleasing to hear that they actually like did a good adaptation. Because I was wondering, and I'm glad we have Bill and Cheyenne on this podcast episode, but I was wondering about how well they did as far as a game comparison. Like, does it? Here's like straight, spot on. Like, so here's spot this: on. as someone who. As someone who didn't play the game, but I watched Cheyenne stream it, and I've watched like some other clips of it, and then I also kind of saw some stuff after watching the anime. I think they captured the feel of the game a lot, the characters and like the feel of Night City. But even down to like what Bill was saying with HUD, yeah, HUD elements and stuff. Um, Rebecca, the character Rebecca, the little the little girl. Yep. Um, girl, you her mean? apartment that you see in the anime is in Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Like you can go in oh, that wow. apartment, and it's like. It looks exactly like the exact setup of her apartment is from the video game that you see that you That's see her really in the dope. anime. I want to say something like, about Rebecca. Like, I know um, David David's apartment, the first apartment that he has where he like constantly has to crawl in like the fucking air conditioning yeah. vent or whatever. That is just the first apartment that you get in Cyberpunk, like like to a T. Like it is the exact it's layout. That's so of video amazing because he's probably... so it's like yeah, like like you know you know how like the, I, the I, I, room real, real quick like the the, the the building he lives in is a uh, uh, mega building H ten I think. And it's actually that apartment is just straight up V's apartment, like after. Yeah. Because V is the so character good. that you play Game as. Game takes place a year later, so it's like it's it's that apartment you get it. Yeah. So I was gonna say about uh, Rebecca. Speaking of her, because we were talking about animation and just like a lot of the things and how things look and how much they compare to the video game and stuff like that. But as far as animation goes, that that scene where I think David comes to her apartment and she opens the door with a gun to his head. <laughs> and like the way that shot is where she's basically naked like she's in basically a bra and panties she has the gun up to his head and she's like hey yeah she's talking to her brother she's like yo dickhead this is your fucking guy you're supposed to be like chaperoning him like i'm not doing this i'm not dealing with him and the way she just like has the gun to his head so gangster looking like this little ass girl but the pose that she has like in his face is just that shot that's when i started because that's really early on but that shot is when i started to be like okay i'm really liking the way this looks like just the way like the shot was kind of like the camera was low even though this is an animated thing it's kind of shot from the ground up like looking up at her and it makes it look tall she's really small yeah but it made her look really tall the way they stretched out her body and stuff like that like just that cinematography stuff i just really like it i appreciate that i also want to quickly say because you mentioned how she was like almost naked um i this is something else that i really liked about the series and i think is very true to the cyberpunk aesthetic and feel I like how free and open they were with nudity in the series, yeah. but it and even during the sexual yeah. moments, it didn't feel sexy. It felt it just felt norm. Like I agree. Yeah, I, you get what I'm trying to say. Like me, I'm disclaimer. I'm a massive pervert. I love you know what I mean. Yeah. Love all that stuff. But when I watch this, 
I never got like horny or anything. Yeah, like, I didn't get the vibe that it was trying to sell me sex, honestly. Yeah, Even when yeah, I was seeing Lucy just so naked, normalized. Yeah. Yes, I didn't think of it as like I like that too. Yeah, it didn't feel like they were trying to get me on some HBO shit where HBO of, just kind of yeah. does nudity. Of all the, the of all the nudity. of all the things my bad, I cut you off. Of, no, no, of all the shit that um I think like the number one thing I probably like the most is that. Like I think it's like it's not just like oh there's no none of that like Puritan American good old fashioned bullshit. It's like yeah. People just fuck. Like, me and Bill were saying, yeah. like, but, that's us, dude. You will go outside. There's a guy with a fleshlight on his dick outside. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> me and Bill were I just love like, that. that would be us. That would, that would just, yep. we would be the guys outside getting our dick sucked oh, by a fucking God. fleshlight in the middle of the <laughs> staircase. Like, it's like, that's their drug. It's like, some guys shoot... Like, I do like cyber how heroin. It's so Other normal. guys have flashlights on their dick outside. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, I appreciate that, because it... it yeah. really put you in because like you said it doesn't it's not like it doesn't stray away from it it's not like this puritan pure thing but also yeah. even though there's a lot of nude nudity in the show it never feels gratuitous it never feels like it's trying to get you to jerk off or, yeah, like, yeah. It just it feels really natural in the setting yeah. and, and i people really, just really, get really naked like it in front of each other when they're like comfortable or whatever and when they're also just trying to blatantly entice someone like she lucy had a crush on david pretty early on because he's so innocent he's so different from what she's used to she's used to uh the city night city where everyone you can't trust anyone and everyone's trying to backstab you right so she's used to like this lifestyle and here comes this innocent ass little boy who's just like the sweetest thing he knows nothing he's trying to drink beer in her apartment and trying to like smoke and he's terrible at both of those things at first anyway and like she just immediately falls for him so she's getting like naked she's getting close to him just kind of trying to turn him on he doesn't even really fully grasp like what's happening because he's that innocent and that young about it but again even in those moments i didn't feel like oh god they're gonna have them they're gonna make them fuck and like it's gonna be this whole big thing like an hbo scene where it's like they're gonna blatantly start showing you know him grabbing on her titties and her bouncing crazy like there was no crazy like cleavage bouncing or anything like that that i could call yeah. back like you know how the fan service stuff they do in regular animes i didn't feel any of that and i was just appreciative that it was just kind of like let's stick to the point here like this is night city and this city basically will consume you if you don't get out of it and i like the kind of the overarching themes like tragedy and like the city will swallow you if you don't like leave essentially um i just i just felt like it stayed on theme a lot of the time and uh yeah i mean i, I do remember though when lucy was naked for like the first time and her nipples they were so fucking hard and i could not <laughs> but i was wondering if they were hard because they were hard you nipples measuring or, how do you know that well i was wondering <laughs> if they were hard, hard because they were hers or because they were modded like oh, I, so i, I wanted it. to talk about this as far as the way this world building goes and the way things look in cyberpunk edge runners you can tell when someone's been modded because they have lines like lines are kind yeah. of a way to show that somebody has uh altered their self with cyber parts like cyberware and david when he first is like introduced and he gets to sandy and he's using it he fights against somebody and somebody says like oh i see you're still using organics like you're still yeah. mostly organic. You you know you're never going to be able to damn it. Like Maine even tells him you're never going to be able to use the sandy properly if you're just if you stay all organic like that. And I like the way they use the word organic. Like obviously that just means you haven't changed your flesh to be robotic. And uh, then when as he starts to mod himself and as people start modding themselves, you see these lines on their body, and that's just indicative of that cyberware. Yep. Right, right. Like you just get used to it. Every time you see that on anyone's body, you just know, okay, this guy's that part of his body's modded. And it's just a really cool detail that like it's just a stylistic thing that if they were to make a season two and I saw a guy with like lines all over his face and his biceps, I'd be like, okay, so like all of those parts of his body are just like machinery. It's really cool. So speaking speaking of a season two, and I feel like it's a little early to talk about, but like fuck it, here we are. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. All right, so like I don't they're like for a season two. The only thing I could see happening is Lucy goes back to Night City to kind of get revenge. Yeah, maybe. I could, yeah, I could Even see that. that. I think I thing, think a, yeah. a much better concept that they could do, and they can milk it for like way more episodes. Is it's a prequel of Maine Ooh. and their crew and how they got together and, and like all the mom. And, and like Martina's yeah, mom would be in it. And like, yeah, it, 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 they can make it for so many more episodes. They can they can deep dive into like every character, like Kiwi's back, like backstory. Yeah, or back, that's backstory. true. Actually. That would be really good because that would give us because like, like honestly, like at the, at the end, spoiler alert, a lot of them die. Yeah. Um, 
and like yeah you can't like people want to see those characters again and get to know more about them and that's like the best way to do it is to make a prequel and we're in a world right now where prequels are hot like people are doing pre- uh, lord of the rings has a prequel right now uh, rings of power game of thrones has a prequel right now house of the dragon yeah uh, there's a bunch of like this is prequel season this is like the we're in a world where prequels are trendy. any uh, yeah it's like anything that has kind of like arrived like you like you know it fucking made it it has a prequel yes you know what i mean so, like everything i i would appreciate a prequel in that i do really like a lot of the characters um but what i was thinking is you can make a million seasons of this and then just follow just Different there's a people. lot of people in that, that city yeah that's there's what i was saying bill, bill, i would love to like see everybody, more of that bill was saying to me he's like well everybody died off i was like bill it's a big fucking city. Like there's just anybody like, like, and that's the thing that I like it. It's almost like, it, I hate to compare them, but they're, they are a little similar. Like Grand Theft Auto. It's like, there's a million fucking stories to be told in Los yeah. Santos and yeah. nice city and whatever fucking universe. Not for nothing. I live in Philadelphia and 20 people died over the weekend. And Each like, one of those people could have a fucking is, That is a you know? regular thing here, unfortunate <laughs> to say. But like w- when people were just dying like that, at first I was like, oh God, this is like an Akame got killed. This is one of those animes where everyone's going to die for the sake of dying. But then I thought about it. The people in real life who are out there living that kind of street life or just, you know, doing like edge runner type things, they are actually getting killed. Like that is a real it, part of real life. The, Go ahead. My bet. The thing that is like so tragic about Night City is like, you pretty much have to be in the city like doing dirt like you have to like or else you're not gonna you're gonna just die it's kind of like like cyber new york city where they say in new york you need a job a side hustle and a little bit of scamming too like in order to survive in new york you need your job you need a fucking side hustle and you need to do a little bit of fraud on like or just a little bit of fraud too to keep you afloat like you can't you can't just like i just have a regular mcdonald's like you can't survive on mcdonald's I mean, in that, that sense, then New York is probably just Night City. Yes. Like, yeah, but then yeah. also, also just like you go outside, like you'll just see somebody get murdered. And that's like, ah, oh, well, that's like uh, Bill also said to me, he was like, I feel like you feel like Night City is a war zone. And I was like, Night City is like Brazil. It's like the worst part of Brazil. It's like, I'm not sure like where I stand on it, because like and when you, when you play the game Night City, like you see like the kids just walking around the street. You know what I mean? Like just kid, like a kid. Yeah, yeah. So you would think, like, if if this place is that dangerous, the kid wouldn't be walking around. I think it's just, I think the the parents parents are terrible. I think the parents have no fucking idea. I I don't, I don't, I don't don't see that just because, like, like every parent can't be terrible. You know what I mean? I can speak to, (laughs) I can speak to that, though. I think that that is actually also something I would compare to my city and probably every other major city in the country. But, like. I was watching some videos on Instagram of just like crimes happening around Philadelphia because I don't know why I do that, but that shit comes across my timeline. And sometimes I stop and I watch it. And last week there was a Wawa in Philadelphia that just had a hundred actual kids storming it and destroyed the Wawa, stole everything out of it, jumped on every car that was outside of the Wawa's uh, parking lot um, and just were fighting and, and acting a crazy. flash and mob? Was it a flash mob? It was a, basically a flash mob and I was like, oh shit, they're back. But my, my <laughs> point is, in that video, because I always like to read the comment section of these types of videos because I just love people make jokes about shit like this and it's terrible, but like I love laughing. So anyway, in the comment section, people were like, yo, why are those little ass babies out there? Like, And I didn't notice it because there's so many kids on screen. Like when you're watching it, you don't really focus on any in one individual but then i went back i was like what kids are they talking about because everyone in the video was a teenager i thought and then i went back and i literally saw a couple of actual kids who were like eight years old and they were <laughs> literally had their hands being held by like one of the teenagers and they're also just engaging in the bad shit and just like running around and doing all Crazy. kinds of nuts shit. it was insane but it reminded me of like certain parts of philly like kensington there's like kids who just walk around on their own as crazy as that is to say because kensington is considered the in- the worst drug epidemic part of the entire country and it's in philadelphia right so like it's here and it's yeah. considered the absolute number one worst drug epidemic part in the entire united states and there are children who go to school every day and they have to walk through kensington to get to school and their parents don't like their parents don't take them to school because they either don't want to they don't care they're terrible like whatever whatever the reason is or they're or they're working their fifth they're job working of the day. The, like like how martinez's mom david's mom she literally overworked herself he didn't even know what she really did like she overworked herself to afford him of like a better life, hopefully. But that's I'm just saying that that is actually more real than you think in the city. Like you'd be surprised how often young children are just wandering around with no supervision. 
So this is kind of like the. Go ahead. Sorry. I was no, gonna no, say go it's, go it's almost like the like the kid in the big city. Like I remember, like, dude, I had this conversation literally. It was like a fucking day ago, where I, I, me and Kenny, we we were we were born in Southwest, and it's fucking crazy around there now. But like, I remember one time I was outside because this is just like the nineties, right? I was outside. I was like, I really got to go take a piss, but I'm just going to stay outside as long as I can just to see what will happen. And I went inside. I was like, okay, hey, where were you? Like, it was like, I was outside. It was like eight. And I was like, and I was like eight. And I just, I went inside. It was like casual. Like, oh, yeah, no, where were you? No, it doesn't matter. Just whatever. Yeah. I mean, I remember being a kid and just going all kinds of different places. And then like, it's funny because when you're a kid, you map out your neighborhood and like, you know how far you've gone. Yeah. And it's always such an adventure when you go to the next block. Yeah. Like when you go to the next block in your neighborhood that you haven't been to yet, you're like, Oh shit. Your world is so small as a kid. And then you start to slowly, like you said, just kind of expand the rubber band and you just find like, Oh, <clears throat> this is an extra section of the city that I never knew about. And you're walking yeah. everywhere because you don't have a car. You probably don't are not taking a bus or anything. Cause that costs money. So you're just like literally walking with your friends aimlessly and just ending up in all kinds of weird neighborhoods and just all kinds of weird places. And I also did the same type of stuff when I was like a preteen and like my early teen years before I found like my core group of friends that I just played Yu-Gi-Oh with and Monster Hunter with. But before that, I used to genuinely just walk just around with like my cousins and stuff and just explore it. Yeah. And, and I would be out for hours. And it's just like, it's just like you said, Cheyenne, I would come in the house and yeah. the adults would just kind of not be concerned about where because, I Because like nowadays yeah. you're like, you're like fucking tracked. You're practically chipped. Yes. It's like, where's your cell phone? Did you have your smartphone? Did you have the? It's like, no, it's just you go go play basketball outside. What does yeah. play basketball you mean? Come in when you the walk around with the ball forever, and you yeah. just go, go the poke the hobo with a stick. All right, just go, <laughs> yeah. go with the stick. Yeah. So, I want to talk a little bit about this and the tragedy of it. I want to give like a, a bit of my some of my feelings on the show in that regard, yeah. and then I'm curious what some of you guys feel. So, you guys mentioned the tragedy of the show. And, like, I saw in one of our chats, I went back and read a little bit of it, but Cheyenne mentioned that, like, you mentioned that some of the show felt predictable, like you knew his mom was going to die, right? And so what I found interesting about the show and what really drew me in, and although I agree with something Fraser said earlier, is that he wishes a little bit longer because with only 10 episodes, it's hard to get attached to the characters. And while I agree, I think, like, 16 episodes would have been perfect. Um, Even in the short time frame, I did find myself really getting roped in to the characters and their person because they have like they all had such distinct personalities without being one note yeah they, they didn't feel like one note people um and so they wrote me in but anyway the anxiety of the show and honestly when i finished episode 10 like i was just sad like i had like that 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 lethargic feeling come over me because the show sets you up and like you know what's happening you're in the shitty city and you know like nobody really makes it out alive and as it goes on you see that like it's going to be a tragedy and you can kind of tell pretty early on that it's not going to have a happy ending. And that like, that kind of settles in and you feel the weight of that. And you know that like, a lo- if not everybody, a lot of people are going to die and it builds this anxiety. Cause like, at least for me, you don't want them to die. Like I want, um, him and Lucy to end up on the moon together. You yeah, know what I, mean? I like, thought that that was foreshadowing. I thought that they were actually going to end up on the moon at the end. And then when we started to get closer to the end, episode nine and 10, when they were telling to put on the exoskeleton thing, I said, oh, this is actually not going to go right. Yeah. Like he's not, not going to make it to the moon with her. And then you even have like Rebecca, who I think on the internet, I mean, I, I could be wrong, but from the brief that I've seen, a lot of people just really like her because she's like a really spastic character and she's really nutty and spastic and like, very anime-esque character. Yes, definitely but very I, anime. I really enjoyed toward the end of the series, she genuinely cared about, um, about, um, David? I always want to call him Dominic. His name's not Dominic. No, I don't David. know why I want to call him Dominic. David. She, re- she like, was trying to open up to him and, like, get him to feel things, and then, like, she really cared about him at the end, and... She, she actually had a crush on him. Yes. She had a crush on him, Which cared about really him. Which blatantly shows him, but she talks about it with other people. Yeah, But then also, like, and this is such a real thing, is you care about somebody so much, and you know what, what is good for them, but because you also respect them and like them, you you do what they want to do, even though you know it's bad for them. Like, yep. she allowed him to continue, like, essentially throw his life away, because she was like, yep. ride or die, like, she was with him. And Whereas Lucy know, actively like, tried to stop him altogether from yeah. going further. Like, she wanted him to stop. And then Rebecca's like, I know... 
that you stopping would be the best thing for you, but I'm also allowing you to make your own decisions, even if it will lead to your destruction. And speaking on something that you said a little earlier, like in your spiel just now, um, when you start to realize that it's going to be a tragedy is, okay, so Rebecca's brother gets killed kind of random by the guy who's just like jerking off outside peeing or whatever. And that that scene happened so quick and so random to me that I had to rewind I, it to see if I missed I, something. I, um, I knew, like, so I, I thought he was going to get, like, his arm ripped off or he's going to die. Because you knew the knew, arm was going to go to David or something. Well, no, it wasn't, like, even, it wasn't even that. It was, like, because at that moment, I, I just, I don't know, it felt a little, I don't know if the word predictable is necessarily right, but it was, like, they were they just kind of hit this point where they were, like, in a groove. Yep. And, like, there was, like, a lull in the action. They're kind of settling down. and then And then that happened. I was, like, okay, so that dude is going to either kill him or like rip his arm off or something like something bad's going to happen yeah. right now. So well, I mean, it, it doesn't it happened, hurt that his eyes were fucking happened, glowing, but I thought he was somehow still alive because his body just did not fall. He, his body didn't like fall over a anything. huge like duration of the whole thing. And I was like, he's still alive in some small way. And then Rebecca just like finishes, like basically just kind of finishes him off and blows off like the lower part of his head. So I want to say a couple things about that. Um, when he got like Rebecca's brother got his head blown off or whatever, I was trying to understand what makes a person dead in this show. Like, I wasn't sure if he was dead either because his body was still standing for a while after I, like, uh... a chunk of his head was gone. So I was like, I don't know if he's actually dead. I don't know if they can repair him. I don't know if this is that kind of world yet. And, and then it... after it was kind of confirmed, I said, okay, so headshots are still headshots in this world. Yeah. In a similar way, I, when it happened, I kind of like, I was like, damn, he's dead. But I, the, there was a, a shred of disbelief in yeah. like this is cyberpunk. Maybe like I don't know. Maybe he's alive. Like yeah, maybe, maybe they, they can, can re-upload. Maybe they can put them together. Or maybe something. his I brain that is backed up somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. Um, the other thing I was going to say is that so when I was noticing like how the show was going to go, it really was episode five and six for me, and that's when Maine started to succumb to cyber psychosis. So at first, when Rebecca's brother got killed, I was like, okay, that's one death in the crew, like in the main crew, whatever. But it, like, I didn't really care for that guy anyway. He was just all like weird about jerking off and stuff like that with his long ass arms. When Maine and Dario got killed, like that whole tragic episode before the time skip, when that once that happened, I realized this whole thing is like this is going to end. Yeah, everyone's going to die. Bad, like yeah. I just as soon as that happened, I was like, everyone's going to die. Uh, because they're just killing them off slowly. Well, as slow as they can for 10 episodes. But like once I saw episode five or six, I forget which one it is. But when I saw Maine and Dario get killed, I was like, oh, this is like that type of, I always, I don't know what to call it, but I call them like a comic got killed animes because in a comic got killed, every character, including the main character dies. And so as soon as I see any anime where like two or three of the main characters that you've been introduced to for several episodes just get killed. I just assume that the rest of the cast is up for grabs and they're probably going to get off at some point too. And I just start to look at every character like, all right, well, what, how is this going to, like, how is this guy going to die? That's Yo, like, I got I to say yeah. something that was so fucking funny to me. Like, you know how like you, you, you watch and you hear people's voice and the one guy, Faraday, he was voiced by um fucking Gus Gus. Spring. And I was like, yeah. I picked it up really quick and I, I just thought, I'm just going to say it, man. He's like, Hey there, cyberpunks. How are you? I'm here to. It's like it was so bad. Like, did anybody else think his voice acting was out of, rough? Out of all the voice actors, he he was the most like wrong fitted. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was like, oh, this is like a topic. I can follow your cyberpunks. I know what you're going to do today. Like, it was just so his, his it, cadence. It, it, it's it's sad because like Breaking Bad just like made him that character, and now he has to be that character for everything. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, it kind of um, sucks. So I watched episode one and I had it in English dub and that's because it was the default setting, I guess, for that. And then after episode one, I don't know why I just had this weird thought. So part of me thought the cyberpunk uh, edge runners was like an American thing, like, like how avatar is really good and it's American. And then I don't know why I had this random thought, but I just clicked the button on the, like my controller and went over to like language details and realized that I could put it in Japanese with English subtitles. So for episode two, oh. I watched it in Japanese with English subtitles because I prefer anime in like English, English subtitles, Japanese voice acting. So episode one, I watched the whole thing in English without even realizing that I could put it in Japanese. I thought it was an American show. I thought it was made by Americans. And I realized like, wait a second, this is probably actually just Japanese, right? And so I put it in Japanese and I watched episodes two through 10 in Japanese. So I actually don't know when you guys are talking about this character's voice and like whoever it was, I got a completely different experience because yeah, I, just, you did. I, li so I listened to the quick. whole thing in Japanese, but I assume that all three of you watched it in English, I guess. Yeah. yeah I watched it in English. Yeah. Okay. So um, Rebecca's voice actor is like the 
goddamn best voice actor for an annoying person. Okay. <laughs> it's like she I, I was watching it and I'm like, I know this voice from somewhere. Like I know this voice. And I play Fallout, like all the Fallout games, and in yeah. Fallout seventy six has a robot bandit called Rose. And she is obnoxious. <laughs> like people hate her. And I was like, I'm plow and I'm and I'm and I'm you know watching the show and I realize, oh my god, the voice actor does Rebecca does the voice for Rose. And like yeah, it's it's, awesome. I, it's, it just made me fall so much more in love with Rose or Rebecca as a character because like it's that voice acting, it's just obnoxious. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I um I like the voice I didn't actor. mind I didn't mind um Faraday's voice, uh, he, yeah. lead, huh? as we mentioned, his voice it by. Made you laugh at a certain point. I don't remember his real name, but the John guy that Carlos plays Dustin Breaking Bad. Um, I know um, exactly what you're talking about. I don't remember his name either, but he's also in The Boys, right? Yeah, yeah he's in he The Boys. Is. He's in a lot yeah. of things. He's also in The Mandalorian. He always plays a villain. Like Frazier, always. do yourself a favor when you get the chance, just to add, for like a quick, like two minute or listen to his English dub voice. It's like, it's, I swear to God. Hello, Daniel. I know what you're going to do today. It was just so. He sounds like, so I, different from what Gus looks like and sounds like in Japanese. Like the Japanese voices, really? like most things that are originally in Japanese, they just fit. So, like even Rebecca's voice is just is is just perfectly fine. Like all of the voices in Japanese are literally exactly what the characters look like. And this is one of the problems that I always have with things that are dubbed. Sometimes they get it right. Most of the time, they get it wrong, and the characters just don't look and sound oh, th correct. Crazy. There were there were two times I I fucking cringed my ass off. One time, Daniel goes like, "Hey, yeah, I guess I'm just built different." Oh god! And yeah, then no. and then hold on, I another time, him. another time, oh, the worst one, Daniel. <laughs> uh, yeah, I knew he, I knew he meant David, but yes, <laughs> damn, damn, oh, Daniel, oh, back damn, damn, again. Daniel, damn, <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> um, no, and then the the worst one, the worst one. Kiwi's talking to somebody, and she's like. Ooh, I guess you're a simp for that, huh? Like she just used the word simp. Yeah, you're, a, you're a simp for the simp for a corpo or something like that. Yeah, it's like really, we're using but the word uh, simp. Like, what are we doing uh, here? Yeah, like simp doesn't, this doesn't feel like a fit in the universe, but who knows? No, you know, uh, it's just, it's it's just for me. It's it's just, it was. It. Simp is just one eyes. word. It was just one word, so I was like, it, yeah, it, it, it felt like when you touch a hot stove and you go ah. I was like, that's what I did when I heard. I was like, no. I just, I, I, I think simp. you're just like a hard contrarian for certain things, and you just hate that word because the it's internet. Uses it. No, I, he, I, he I use the word he's, simp. He's, I, he's bitter and vindictive. vindictive I a, use the word you know? simp, but it just doesn't. It's very trendy this. right now. It's like gaslighting. The word gaslighting is also trendy. Like, oh, I'm surprised it is. They didn't use Everybody's gaslit these days, yeah. man. And certain words are just trendy. A hamburger and they're gaslit. Like, <laughs> I don't have a problem with them using the word at all. Um, but I, my experience, I really can't even relate to what you guys are saying right now. So I'm just like, I'm listening to what you guys are saying. But I had a completely different experience because I just watched yeah. nine episodes in, in Japanese. So I don't even remember the English voice acting, except that from it episode was kinda, one, it was kind of cringe. I remember episode one as I was watching it, I was trying to focus on what was happening and I kept thinking about the voices. And I was like, oh God, this is like kind of annoying. And then I guess that's what maybe tipped me off that maybe I can switch the language. And I'd switch it to Japanese. And my ears just like the sound of Japanese voice acting because I think that Japanese voice actors just are so much better at conveying emotion specifically sincerity i just don't think american voice actors how you said that he's like oh david i see you're like I, <laughs> it doesn't sound sincere it sounds like a mm. fake like people don't sound like that like they well, just also me just being an asshole too though you know <laughs> well it's also just like how I feel, i've always felt and in, in, on this podcast we're at episode 102 now i've expressed this opinion a lot i don't think that american voice actors for the most part obviously there's always exceptions i can't generalize the entire american voice right acting, right but like most of the time american voice actors always sounds like they're affecting a voice that is so far from what anyone would actually speak like and it doesn't usually fit the character in the way the original mm. like voice actors and the way the original characters what look are, and sound. What are some dubs that you like? Uh, one of my favorites is Soul Eater. I think Soul Eater's dub mm. is fantastic. I, um, I also think Dragon Ball Z's like dub is is perfectly fine. Like Vegeta and Goku and Cell, I think they all sound great. Um, yep. Another give one. Give me a couple more. Give me a couple more. Uh, let me see. What's another dub that I think is like Bebop's any... like the no-brainer. Like, yeah, Bebop. Like no you can watch it either way. Oh, what about um, uh, Fullmetal Alchemist? I was gonna is... say, I literally yep. was gonna say Brotherhood, yep. Fullmetal Alchemist, Brotherhood. Uh, they sound really good. Yeah, they sound like perfect. I don't. Fine. I don't think the dub was bad. I I just think it was like, for example, like another thing. Maybe maybe it's just because uh, like a, I'm a product of my time. Like I didn't really cringe when Maine he would call like Daniel David whatever the fuck. 
he would call he'd be like hey come on dog like he would just call him dog like he th- would throw it in but i was like well is that me just being biased because like i'm used to people saying dog versus like like if he's also david black, was like so come like... on fam squad like let's do it like i don't know whatever fucking was Zoomer fam squad shit. really in there no no oh no, god no, no. no. <laughs> okay i was about to say jesus know. christ oh jesus i yeah. wanted to because um to go back you mentioned main again and fraser you just talked about main i or you talked about main before we got sidetracked yeah uh main was awesome like you you were saying yes. that that episode and like when you realized shit was going downhill that's part of what i'm what I mean by the anxiety of the show. And it's like very early on, I realized like, this is going to be a show where everybody dies, but the anxiety is like, you hope you're wrong. Yes. So there's an episode where there's an episode where basically it's heavily hinted that like Maine's going to die and David's going to get his arms, but it's like, and so from there on, it's like, I know Maine's going to die, but I want to be wrong. He literally says, then, when I die, you can have this arm. I mean, it's like, yeah. it can't yeah, it's get never, You never want to hear that. You never want to yeah. fucking hear that. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then your anxiety starts, because then when he weird. starts having the, the psychosis happen, you're like, uh, or me, I'm like, literally the next man. episode. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, yeah. and it's, psychosis, oh, my, my, my arms come off and go to your body. Oh. Like, but it's like, <laughs> I just didn't want it to happen. And then I really oh, like how... Throughout the series, you don't realize at first is like he really takes David under his wing yes. and ends up caring for him. Yeah, and then he really wants the Sandevastein. And at first, you just think he wants it because it's a broken thing. But something that I really appreciate is in the episode that he dies, you realize that I think maybe he used to be a runner or something like that, and like he wanted to, he always wanted to run fast. I think he was like he did track or whatever, and then so you realize that like at his death, he wanted the Sandevastein. It was more than it just being this broken piece of equipment. His dream has always been to like run faster and to go go further and like yeah. all that. So when he kind of accepted David under his wing and like nurtured him and everything, it was like really cool because then he ended up trying to vicariously live through him and then like Yeah, so he, I have something to say about Maine too. He clearly plays like a father figure to David because as David is like I would consider a teenager, right? Like there's parts where he doesn't even realize that Lucy and him are going to have some kind of sexual relationship and Maine's the one who's hinting at it. Like, Oh, yeah, yeah. Different. and when they finally do have sex, he's like, Oh, something's different about you. You got some ass last night or whatever. Yeah. And like, <laughs> there's this whole thing. It's, it's, I, I guess I should say fatherly It's more like big brother. It's, it's definitely yeah, like yeah. a big brother kind of vibe. But what I really like about Maine's character is like you said, he does live vicariously through David. And I wish that the show took more time or had more time because they, they really couldn't. But I wish that they had more time to develop that relationship because you can clearly see after the time skip that David was heavenly, like heavily inspired by Maine. Like he literally yeah. looks like Maine. He's all husky and huge and he has a man. Like, think of, would you guys think of him getting all husky like that? For me, I, I just didn't like it. Like I know why they did it, but I, I, didn't, I wasn't really to, feeling it. To me, much. it literally was to show how much of an impact Maine had on his life. And mm, the problem yeah. with it is it happened so fast that you really couldn't fully get like what they wanted to convey is that Maine was who David looked up to. Like he, he even like talks about it towards the end. Like I want to do this for Maine and I'm, he always brings him up. So he was supposed to be this big inspiration for him, but you don't get enough time to really fully grasp like how close they were. There's a time skip. And then he just has, he looks like Maine. That's another, that's another, what you just said is like another one of like the, the hard hitting tragedies of the show is like, there's a David ends up wanting to complete these dreams that his mother put on him and that Maine put on him and he wants to do these things. And then on top of that, there's his dream, which is just to help Lucy get to the moon. And in a way, in a way you could argue like he's being selfless because like he's trying to do all these things, these dreams of these other people, Lucy, date Lucy, his mom and Maine. But then like, in a way you realize like how selfish it is because like it's almost, he's running from his problems and he's putting everything into helping all these other people. And it's like, Lucy doesn't want to go to the, at this point, she doesn't want to go to the moon anymore by herself. She wants to go with you, but he kind of like throws all that away and it makes it his goal to like send her to the moon, regardless of whether or not he dies without really considering her feelings in that way. And so it's like, it's this odd mix of like him trying to be selfless in the most selfish way. I really like, uh, so David, you know, David's dreams or whatever, kind of go out the window he's all about like just the group and lucy and like 
you know, just doing his edge runner jobs, getting a bunch of money. I like how he responds really early on because he's so poor. So when he starts getting paid, like one of the big parts and that's cool about it is how he, you know, when somebody gets money for the first time, it's kind of like, oh shit, I, I'm getting this much. And the people laugh, like everyone laughs at him and stuff. Like that whole thing is really cool. But like May's like, yeah, here's your cut. And I always slice it down the middle, like perfectly. Like we, it's always even or whatever. Like I'm not trying to get over on anybody. And so like when the time skip happens, he basically takes on a mantle. Like I'm the leader. We cut it down the middle. Here's your cut. Like he's, he literally just becomes main and he suffers yeah. from the same exact tragedy. The cyber psychosis thing, um, that main experiences where like the, the way they show it and they showed in episode one with the guy who first had the Sandy is the, the crazy shaking eyes things that are literally off of their body. It's a really cool stylistic thing that they do. But what I really like is that David had this thing where his mom's dream was, I want you to be at the top of the Arasaka building. Yeah. And when he suffers from his psychosis, he's like, look, mom, I made it to the top, but it's not in the way that she wanted to it's twisted it's yep. literally like how somebody who suffers from psychosis sees things i don't completely like understand psychosis obviously but just from what i've seen in media and like movies and just having watched Dahmer like last week people who suffer from any kind of psychosis like the way they interpret things right is like completely different than reality so when he's yeah. at the top of the building he's fighting adam smash or whatever he's like look mom i finally made it to the top of the arasaka building and then main when he was going through his psychosis, he was having the same type of thing where he thought he was finally living out his dream, but that's not what was right. He was being gunned down and like basically yep. hunted to be killed. And it just makes it really tragic that at the end of their lives, they don't fully comprehend anymore. Like what the reality is any like that. It's just really sad. Like die like that where you don't even like, you're not even there all the way anymore. You're something I want to ask, real, I want real to ask quick. Bill and Cheyenne. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say if, if, if you guys could like say like who would maybe be like you maybe think that the best or your your favorite character is and then who would be your least favorite character or you just maybe you even think it was like a bad character like you're like that character just sucked i don't so, like think, what would be your for your me there wasn't one, a and then you're yeah i don't for me i don't so there wasn't a, any to me bad characters i don't think there's any characters where i was like this character ruined the show uh at the same time I don't know if I necessarily have an absolute favorite character. Like, maybe it's main, but, like, the show is short enough, and the way the characters interact and the cast interacts, it's all, it's almost like there isn't one character that stands out to me. Like, every yeah. character is just kind of part of it's the also essence so of the short. show. I don't really yeah. have a favorite or most hated character either, if I'm being completely honest. Like, I know the internet really likes Rebecca and stuff like that, and I'm pretty sure the internet likes Lucy, too. But um, I don't really... I yeah. like those characters. I like, but I like all of the characters. Yeah, yeah. I think that and, all the characters are fine. Um, I guess if I had to say like least favorite, least likable is Rebecca's brother. I don't even remember his name. That's how much I don't care. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, I know yeah. Kiwi. I know Rebecca. I know but uh, Dario. Dude, I'm, I'm so indif indifferent to Rebecca. Like I, I literally just got nothing yeah, but from believe that Believe it or character. not, uh, CD, right. CD Projekt Red wrote the script and the character designs for all the characters besides Rebecca. And it was actually Studio Trigger that came up with the concept for Rebecca and, and convinced CD Projekt Red to put her in the show. Okay. Because yeah. CD Projekt Red like, basically wrote the story for the, for the anime. Yeah. It's, I think they just animated it. I think they did a good job. And for Rebecca, I would, I would say that Cheyenne, I would, I would agree with you that I was indifferent to her for most of the series, but toward the end, when she started to like, when you saw I'll the be a little more loyal, well, not just that, but when you saw the cracks in her facade and you really saw her care for David, and it's even though we know that she liked him and was attracted to him, we really saw like it went beyond that. Like she really had these feelings for him, and like I don't know, there, there's these cracks, these she side conversations she had with people. All right, so yeah, number like, one for me would be Adam Smasher for dive bombing Rebecca into the ground. No, I'm just oh, shit. she lived. I'm just she kidding. lived. She didn't die. So, uh, I have photo. I have photo ev evidence proof if I can find it. Uh, well, uh, she's for dead. me. No, no, she's, she's, she's alive. Yo, me and Kenny's yeah, she's alive. Exact she's same alive. time and exact same cadence. <laughs> <laughs> so, so number what? one for me would probably be um, Kiwi, but like I'm, I, I don't know. And then, like, I love least Kiwi's favorite character design. I think that her character design, like the way she looks, is sick. Like that, she looks like yeah. a fucking she assassin. Looks, she looks so at awesome. least favorite for me would probably be Faraday. Like I just think it wasn't an interesting character. 
Giancarlo Esposito oh. fucked that voice. Okay, really I, feel like, I, I feel like I have to watch the anime over again with Japanese. Like, I, <laughs> I have to but, watch it now. Yeah, okay. I just didn't like sure. Faraday. I just didn't like Faraday. He was man. fine. Like, I, and I never heard his English really? voice. He was completely fine in Japanese. And I actually have the opposite opinion. I really like Faraday's design. I think the three eyes on this one side of his yeah, face. Yeah. I could yeah. not stop staring at that when he was on screen. I think that yeah, is, is such, cool. It's it such cool. a cool thing because I know that like cyberware everyone is modified to some degree like rebecca's eyes are not human anymore like they're blatantly just yeah not human rebecca's eyes. skin like everything yes so when i saw faraday's three eyes on one side i was like man that's so cool he probably has such a cool sight of vision like just like yeah. what he sees and what i see he probably is just so far more advanced because that was the whole point too is when you are modified like cybernetically you're just an advanced human like everything about you is just better like when they showed sometimes they would actually show how like Lucy sees the world or how like Rebecca sees things. And it's just so much better than like what an average person can see, like a, a organic person can see rather. So um, I wanted to ask Cheyenne and Bill on the note of the, the cyber implants and the cyber psychosis. Cause I know you can get cyber implants in the game. How do they handle cyber psychosis in the game? All right. Uh, this is spoilery. Uh, so um, if, if um, you, just tell you, me when you guys are done. Cause I'm yeah, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, right. I'll message. Bill got further than me. I, 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 wait, I'm waiting for them to fix the game up more, but hold on. Um, <laughs> just type, type when you're done. Type when you're I'll done. Type, I'll I know. type when I'm done. All right. All right. So in the game, you can you can basically fully deck yourself out and never get cyber psychosis. Okay. And in the game, believe it or not, there's actually a, a cyber hack, a quick hack called cyber psychosis. So you can actually have an ultimate. You can use it on somebody and it'll just make them go cyber psycho. So cyber psychosis is in the lore if you get too much cyberware it overloads your brain synapses and basically makes you go crazy yeah. but it doesn't but really see, happen mechanically it doesn't really happen like mechanically okay. so in, in the game you can't actually be caught you can't get cyber psychosis and you can use the quick hack to give people cyber psychosis but it's not like a thing you can happen. You're to not do, always to you. like on the run from cyber psychosis throughout the time playing the game. Like you're no. not, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. not trying now, to actively outrun it. You're not, you're not actively, which is like kind of disappointing, but also kind of cool at the same time. So you can like, then you can make your character and make your build. It's a, it's an RPG game, role playing game. Like there's stats yeah. and skills. Are and immunosuppressants a thing? And things. No. Okay, uh, there are. There are got over it. Yeah, there are healing injectors. Which are the exact same thing in the, in the anime. You, you see them, you, they're, you're using them, and they're just, they just heal you. That's okay. what they use for it. Okay. So um, I call them immunosuppressants now, in the anime. Now, with the game company, CD Projekt Red, releasing the dev kit for the game, I'm willing to bet you're going to see someone build a mod that adds the chance of you getting cyber psychosis and like having like, or going the suppressants crazy. and stuff. They have really having suppressants and stuff. I, I'm guaranteeing you there will be a mod that adds that in. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I um, yeah, that's something I really want to know. So I guess we can message Cheyenne. And tell yeah, him bring Cheyenne back, back in. So, uh, yeah, and as we, I will wait for him for a second. Yo. Okay. Yeah. So welcome back. We were talking about like the cyber psychosis stuff and immunosuppressants, and I actually really like the whole concept that after you mod yourself with so much cyberware, uh, it eventually will overload your brain. And you will become a crazy person. And like humans only have so much RAM. Like we're not actually computers in a sense that, you know, computers are just, you know, you plug them in there electrically. I guess we are in a, in a way too. We're also powered by electricity and stuff like that, but in a very different way. And so after you do too many mods and depending on how powerful the mods make you and push you, uh, you are more prone to just going crazy. And they take immunosuppressants, which is like their medication to kind of uh, just make it where you don't have cyber cyber, don't suffer from cyber psychosis. But if you do it too much, it doesn't matter. Like, I think at one point, the guy who's always doing his mods for him says like, it won't matter how special you think you are. Once you take these, this is it. You are going to go crazy. And I'm telling you this right now. So when he gets to like the end of the show and he has to put on a cyber skeleton, he has like those last nine immunosuppressants and he gets to the last one. He says, I guess this is finally it. And when he does inject that one, he really does go crazy. That's when he starts talking about mom, I made it to the top of the Arasaka building and stuff like that. But I just really uh, enjoy the concept of this cyber psychosis thing where you can't just become Adam Smasher with no consequences. Like everyone can't just yeah. be like, oh, I'm a yeah. billionaire. I'm Jeff Bezos. And because I'm Jeff Bezos and I have so much more money than you everyone look like else, the, I can just You put... look like the fucking Tiger Man. You, look, you, you get yes. like all these injections in your face. You have like the fat Kardashian lips. You just go... 
it's too much surgery. You got too much plastic surgery. And there's a consequence to it that no matter how <laughs> special, like they made it a point that David is special in episode one and two, right? Like he is clearly a bit more uh, resilient than the average human is, but it still doesn't matter because no one is so special that they could actually wear like that cyber skeleton until, you know, he was wearing a fucking alpha basically or a beta of it. And yeah. it, it eventually did ruin him. And it, Okay. On the topic of that, the cyber skeleton and like Adam Smasher and all that, why the fuck was Adam Smasher so much more powerful than that man? Like, there were parts. He's from. He's from the game. It's because he's. It's because he's Adam fucking Smasher. That's why. Yeah. Like he's legend. He's literally Actually, legendary. He's a legend. He's just a legend, man. Like, or why is he's very old? He's like over he's like a couple hundred years old. Oh, he's shit. a fucking old guy. Yeah, yeah he's. So, he was. Um, he was the beginning of cyberware like modifications. He was like at the start. So one of the cool things about him, and this is where that anime in a short amount of time, it kind of subverted my expectations because I was thinking when the main character, David, got his uh, cyber skeleton thing and he went up against Adam Smasher when they first started going at it and stuff, there was a part of me that was like, oh shit, this is going to be epic because David's going to be able to stand up against this legend and David is probably going to become a legend, right? Right. And then Adam Smasher quickly, like, and this blew me away. It was his away. story. It was Adam Smasher. Yo, story. Adam was just like, all the shit you're doing is child's play. Like yeah. the whole, your thing using magnets. He was like that. And you see how, the crazy thing is what I love about the way they did this. They showed the episode before episode nine, when he first put the skeleton on how ridiculous the magnetism was to everyone else. Like he <laughs> went through that Militech people, the Militech group that in episode one, when they came, the guy who was using a Sandy couldn't deal with them at all. Like the Militech people zero dipped the fuck out of him. They just dominated him from the beginning to the end after he just killed all those regular cops. Right. So you get to see that David with the cyber skeleton zero diffed Militech, which is a big statement. It's like, oh shit, that really is the real deal. And then Adam Smasher comes in and he just completely trivializes David in the cyber skeleton. He's like, that's not real. You're not that fast. That shit is trivial. That shit is child's play and rips off his arm, rips off legs, like dodges when, when, uh, David tries to go fast with that Sandy. Cause he's using a Sandy and the cyber, cyber skeleton at the same time. When he does that, Adam Smasher just like, you're not even fast. And he just like, does For it anybody too. who's ever seen one piece. He was going against an Admiral. Yes. That's what in, the yeah, beginning yeah. Of the, in the beginning of the show, because right now, like admirals will just get fucking dicked on by like Luffy. Hey, maybe you're well. right. But, uh, yeah, it's um, it's man, Adam. There was definitely no like triumphant anime moment. Like Adam Smasher was like, yeah, no. Dude, and the like, thing is, though, the second I saw Adam Smasher, I was like, oh, it's it, that's it. Like <laughs> I, I, I didn't have to watch anything. I, I was like, I did that's Adam know. Smasher. Because like before the game came out, I followed it for a couple of years. Like, and I would like read a little bit about the lore. Like, there's these legend, like uh, Black Hand Morgan, I think, or Morgan Black Hand, something like. Like, there's just kind of people that are like sort of lore people and Adam Smasher is one of those guys and so like the first time you see him in 2077 I was like oh fuck and uh David learned the hard way like, yeah, yeah it's it's a shame people in Night City that they like they are the people that when you want to make a name in Night City you want to be that person and like that is one of those people and like well you don't want to be him but that's the guy like you look up to you know like those yeah. all oh, around also, people yeah, in Night uh, City Back to the Legends things, when, if you're a, an edge runner, in order to make a name for yourself, you pretty much have to die. Oh. Also, good good, good thing you got going there. <laughs> <laughs> Fraser, Fraser's suffering from some cyber yeah. cyber Like, like Johnny, right Johnny Silver. Yeah. So, <laughs> also, also, guy, I think that might be a guy who's vulnerable to cyber psychosis. So Fraser, uh, what Fraser just turned into. So this Fraser, is basically... you all right? Talk to us. This is... I am not all right. <laughs> this is basically... <laughs> For the people who are on our Patreon who are watching the video version of this podcast, mm -hmm. I just changed my picture to the guy who altered himself to look like a tiger. Um, he looks absolutely fucking ridiculous, and he definitely looks like someone who would be susceptible look ridiculous? to cyber psychosis. He looks insane. If He's I saw a man that knows what he wants. If I saw this guy in real life, I would be terrified of him. I would cross the street. Well, you're staying with Adam Smasher. <laughs> yeah, well, now I know. I, I, I guess I, I needed to see Adam Smasher in action to know that he was the real deal. I just didn't know that he was going to be so much of the real deal that the main character, because usually, you know, main characters got do sex mocking and nonsense, right? But like the main character with this incredible buff was not even close to dealing with Adam. Like not even, yeah. it wasn't even like there was a part where I had hope. I had no hope once the fight started. It was just like, yeah, none of this is good. Like, like another legend, Johnny Silverhand. He's played by Keanu Reeves. 
You know what I mean? Like Keanu Reeves is in a character in Cyberpunk 2077. So it's like there's people that are like, oh, okay, that's that's Keanu Reeves. So like you know it's gonna be Oh, Frazier, you all right? Yeah, I'm back to normal. I took oh, some shit. immunosuppressants. Oh, God. I'm back to normal. I, to... I thought you were done, man. I thought he was I wanted done. to say something real quick, and then I want to ask Cheyenne and Bill uh, a more specific question, or I guess it's a general question, but um, one more thing I just wanted to say was uh, about the end, and uh, one of the th- another one of the themes of the show is just like nobody learns from their mistakes or from any mistakes. Everybody just kind of barrels full speed ahead. Like, oh, they do. Frazier yeah. mentioned... David died essentially the same way Maine died. Yeah. And he had, he watched Maine died. He knows why he died. And mm. he was given the same, like, like, hey, just dial it back. Like, dial back your cyberware. And then the same, he was like, I can't because I have to, like, do this for Maine. And, like, just bowed forward. And so you literally watched Maine die from the exact same mistakes it's kind of like the movie soul food where all the black people gather around to eat like this really really good soul food stuff like fried chicken baked macaroni and cheese candy yams collard greens cabbage hog moths pigs feet all that right sweet potato pies they eat all this amazing food (laughs) but in that same movie their grandma who's one of the main characters big mama she dies from diabetes from eating this food and at the end of the movie all of them to come together to have a really big soul food dinner. The movie's called Soul Food. So they watched their grandmother die from eating this and it just completely ignoring her health. And they all come together to eat the exact same food that killed her. And this is yep. a celebration. That is literally cyberpunk. It's so and, and not a single person thing. at the dinner would ever put it together. They never put that. Put it was never together, brought up. man. It wasn't yeah, like yeah, maybe we shouldn't up. be eating this, or maybe we should like. It was like no, yeah. let's celebrate her dying from this by also consuming it ourselves. So yeah, yeah. Same thing. So it, it's a shame, and like everybody suffers from their mistakes, and like they have ample opportunity. Well, at the same time, it's like they have some opportunity to fix their mistakes. At the same time, Night City is a a, a monster of a place, and like somebody. I- earlier you kind of have to commit crime and like do shit to, to even try to get ahead and live um, uh i could add to that too your point uh so one of the things kiwi's character we could talk about her a little bit so kiwi betrays the group at first she's like part of the group and she's an ally and all that stuff but come to find out she's actually working for faraday and when she betrays the group she gets betrayed by faraday she gets shot but not killed And right before that happens, she was saying, yo, pay me my money. I did my part. I'm leaving the city. She tries to get out. And this is, they needed to show us this because again, this is all supposed to be like this great tragedy, right? Like this entire thing, Night City, it's very difficult to get out alive. Like that's the whole point is like, but no one really makes it out of Night City. So this one character who has the right idea, she's like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. I'm just going to get my crazy payday because she was going to get a lot of money. And presumably she already had a lot of money, but it was like, it was enough to leave and live a comfortable life elsewhere. So she's like, I'm going to, I'm going to double cross the group, get this huge payday. I'm going to skip town and I'll never look back. Right. Cause this city just consumes everybody. And when she tries to do that, she herself as she said earlier in the show, never trust anyone. She gets backstabbed by Faraday and then eventually some goons find her and they shoot and kill her. And like, it just shows that it's that hard to get out. Like even when you have the right idea to get out, you just befall the tragedy and die yourself. Um, so it, it's, it's such a disgusting city too. Like the, it's like, it's like peak capitalism. It's like the worst parts of capitalism. Yeah. When you see the part where like, his mom gets in the car accident and she's like laying on the ground and the fucking the ambulance comes and they're like, oh, no, she isn't one of our customers. And they just like roll out, yep. like just leave her there. Like they could have saved her. But like, way, nah, she's, she's not one of our customers and just move on. I forgot all about this, but the way insurance works in that verse is crazy. Dude. <laughs> yeah. So but trauma team, especially for the super rich. And as you can see, yeah. they're they're armed. They're armed paramedics. Yeah, they're like, yes. yeah, they're like fucking like military paramedic type yeah. dudes. Like they're, they're, they're for the rich, out. Basically. They're for rich people. They they know how to get their fucking clients. It's insane. Yeah. Like insurance in that world is just wild. And if you don't have it, you see it's what like happened to his mom. They're like, yeah, we can just cremate her real quick. And it's like, yeah, oh, it's yeah if you have to deal with trauma team, like you're gonna have a fucking problem. Like yes. So uh, I wanted to ask Bill and Cheyenne. So before we did this, Bill had told me, he asked, like, hey, can I be on the podcast? And if not, there's some things I want to, some points I want to send you that I really would like you to mention. And so, uh, Bill, I would like to give you a moment to, like, I don't know, really dive in and get your thoughts out. And then also I want to hear some of Cheyenne, like, really, like, what are, because everything we've talked about so far is just, like, 
why I would think that you would really just enjoy sure, the sure, show. Sure. And so I would just want to, I want you to break into like, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. what rubs you wrong in the show? Why didn't you like it? And I also just kind of want to hear what are some of the big things Bill wanted to, wanted to talk about. Oh, you want to go first? Sure. All right. So my, my, my big thing I said it before was like how on point they stayed with the universe, with the hacking, the HUDs and like all the music and the sounds and all that it was just like on point, even like the weapons they used, they didn't try to like sneak in like a regular old gun. It was all the weapons that they used. Now the oh, only wow. even thing, the guns, even the gun sound effects, even the gun sound effects were from yeah. from the game. The only thing though, like uh, at one point, uh, the scene where uh, Rebecca's brother dies, Rebecca, you know, she she gets really mad and she starts shooting at him. She's using two Militech Omahas, which are tech guns, basically uh, electromagnetic guns. So you have to actually you have to charge those and then you fire them. And she's just going bam, 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 bam with them, which is like. All right, that's that's not like a hundred percent how those work, but like anime, you have to give it like a little bit of room. Yeah. Um, another aspect that I really like was I just real quick. I love how much Bill knows, even if it's fake artillery. How much Bill knows about <laughs> fucking artillery? For those of you that don't know, Bill knows a lot about tanks, the military, guns, and like he knows like the like what model tank is this and what model gun is that. Like he knows a lot. He knows like the sound that guns make. Like this. Like oh. This was an M seven six seven nine because of the way the muzzle flash and the sound yeah. of it. Like he knows that shit, and the fact that he also just knows that shit for fake guns, I just like I couldn't expect anything more. It's when awesome. we when we were all kids, we thought he was gonna be a school shooter, like me and um. That shit. <laughs> I was like, That's Bill, are you good. gonna are you gonna do that thing? Are you gonna do that thing you talked about? No, no, we're, like, we're good. We're uh, good. All right. <laughs> You know, as don't, you were saying, don't come in on me, Tuesday. As you were saying, he knows all the stuff about guns and stuff. My eyes got real big for a second. I was like, uh, you know how that's perceived? in 2022? Like it's in 2022, it's, saying it's, that just doesn't. It's not the flex you think it is. Like it's just no, like, it, it is not. It's like I, 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 I'm not open about that. It, it comes from a place of love and like an intense. Yes, and I understand that I mean, some people interest. are allowed to be enthusiast yeah. about like it's, that type of stuff. But it's cool because even when. When Anthony was streaming Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ant was streaming Final Fantasy VII Remake, and there's a part in there where there's, like, a tank. And there's just, like, a... It's, like, a fucked-up tank. And I just... all What I see is a tank. I just see a tank. Me too. Bill I was watching the stream, and he was on... He was like, oh, that's a... And I don't remember the model, but he says, ja like, oh, Japanese, that's a Japanese chai he from, like, World War <laughs> oh, One or the Japanese-Chinese War. So, like, he sees the tank, and he's like, oh, that's a variation of this model tank. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> And like we're just playing FF7 remake, and he knows the model tank that is in that game. It's kind of like how our friend Lewis knows everything about cars. Yeah, you know and how Lou would just start talking. We'd be at locals playing Yu-Gi-Oh, and Lewis would just start talking about the new BMW and the new Audi. And I'm like, bro, I know nothing about cars. So like all of this yeah. R8, and like it has this new engine and the V6, and like all this other shit, and how much horsepower. I have no idea. You are speaking a different language. The same way when we talk about Yu-Gi-Oh in public. And people are around us, and they have no idea what Yu-Gi-Oh is, so they just hear us. I think you guys are summoning witches or something. Yes, they do. They're they like, do. you guys are speaking a different language. That, I mean, that happened to us. We, I remember it was me, Fraser, Dude. Cairo, and like maybe two other people on the L. And somebody, we were talking about Yu-Gi-Oh, and somebody literally stopped us and said, hey, are you guys speaking English? Yeah, I you just like, it. yeah. Dude, I fucking wonder that. Sometimes I'll listen to podcasts, and I'll be like, what are they talking about Yu-Gi-Oh? Let me listen in. I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking don't about. Don't listen Preachers to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Why are you listening to Yu-Gi-Oh! Level... episodes? I don't yeah. fucking know, but... We have so you. many non-Yu-Gi-Oh! episodes like this one that you can listen well, to. I was but... curious. I was curious. I was like, I wonder what's like going on with the Yu-Gi-Oh! world. And like, <laughs> Frazier's like, well, you plus one into a, 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 a Migriotius. And I'm like, what the fuck is a Migriotius? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Not a Migriotius. <laughs> so, I just wanted to do that quick aside. I played the game before. Because I think it's cool that Bill, like, knows that shit, even if it's fake shit. And, uh, like, it's cool that in FF7 Remake, a game that I know Bill's never going to play, for, he was still able to be like, oh, that's a, and, like, recognize something. So, anyway, I interrupted you, Bill. It's all good. I forget where we even were. You were just <laughs> talking yeah, about, like, the game and how... Oh, oh yeah, the game stop, and the game sounds, and, like, my yeah, and Rebecca's guns. Yeah, so, like, that's that's something I think, like, they, they just kept accurate to the game they didn't try yeah, to like did, did reinvent them. things or like try to like make something of their own or something like that so it gets it's cool that they didn't like stray from that um another thing i, I played the game i have like 100 hours in the game i had to stop because just game breaking bugs that like just made i was gonna ask that i actually wanted it. you to speak a little bit towards the bugs i want to know sure. what 
bugs. Well, like when when so, all I know was that Cyberpunk was overrun by bugs when it first came out. It was all I saw about it. I saw nothing positive about it outside of just bugs, 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 bugs. But I, I have no idea what those bugs actually were. I can tell me, you one real quick. Let me jump in ahead. front of Bill. Should I show this is from Rider? This is from Cheyenne Stream. Cheyenne oh, was streaming the game great. and he's like having sex with a girl or a guy. I don't know. And he's like having sex in the middle of the sex scene. Like a machine gun just appears. And like he's, it looks like he's like having sex with a machine gun. Like <laughs> sounds like my kind of game. <laughs> so, so Fraser, there's a legend in Night City. A lot. Of, he's, he's. They say he's the best motorcycle rider. This is a screenshot of him riding a motorcycle. They call him the Ass Rider. What do you think of that? <laughs> he's, okay, so he's rumored to be a glitch legend, though. He's a glitch legend. That's a screenshot from my game, by the way. I was playing the fucking game, and my guy started t posing with his ass cheeks out on top of the motorcycle. Yes, yes. So it's like people I'm who are fucking done. I was people done. who are listening like, to this episode because I want to be conscious of our audio only listeners, yeah, which is like for most of them. Uh, the picture is of a guy on a motorcycle, but he's standing up completely on the motorcycle as it's riding, and his he ass posing. is out. His and ass cheeks are just out. He has like fucking speedos on. And it yeah. wasn't your outfit, I assume, right? Th that was not my outfit. <laughs> and he also had an old man. I know I'm getting there. I'm getting a little bald. He had a fucking old man balding going on. Where like the top of his head became like old oh, man hair. Look, he's missing hair at the top. And I was like, that is I'll, so I'll, I'll, post, I'll post some like graphical bugs that I came across. So here is a palm tree just completely just deep digitizing like Thanos just snapped that tree out of existence. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Yeah. I have no idea what was so, going on. See, no, the Bill thinks that's a glitch. It's just cyberpunky. I was going to say, for, <laughs> so to explain, there's like a palm tree on the on like a highway, and it really does look like it's cyberpunk de-digitizing out of existence, and it almost looks like it could be part of the real game, but it was a like holographic tree or something, but no, it, it's physically there. If you hit it, you hit it. I, um, I, I fucked a man on accident in my game. No. <laughs> Are you sure it was an accident? Oh, no. Yeah, I'm hey, this is a good story. <laughs> Dude, I was, uh, I was trying to pr uh, proposition maybe like a female character for like a little lovemaking. And this guy was watching from the shadows on the side. <laughs> Look at this. Guy. Just watching from the side. <laughs> And uh, he's like, hey. and then my guy said to him, "Let's see what that mouth can do." And that's that. Those that is an exact quote. So you can I, have sex. So my guy is bisexual. I didn't know he was bisexual. Yeah, yeah, you can have. Yeah, you can have sex. 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 And uh, he's like, "Let me see what that mouth can do." That's what that's he said to him. Let me see. There's, there's four romance options um, options in the game, and yeah. the one he's talking to is just it's just like a like a, like a hooker on the on the road. Yeah, it's like yeah. a little cutscene thing. Yeah. yeah, but there um, are there are four romance options. I have a question because I because I'm going to back this up a, a bit. What the hell is the cyberpunk video game even about? Like, is it just Grand Theft Auto in the future? No, well, sort of. Um, it's about a story. Uh, spoiler, well, everybody. Uh, maybe, Shine, do you want to maybe? Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna go too deep. You kind of know. I haven't played in a while, and like, I'm once you want to, you want to be fresh. Play it very. But like, what's the All premise? Right. All right, so, uh, you play as either you, when you first make it, it's a role playing game. So you pick your your life path. You're either a corpo leaving the corp your corporation to make your own way uh, a street kid trying to make you know trying to be a legend or a nomad who's let nomads are like roaming gangs of like x low low level like employees like mcdonald's employees basically they're just they're done with working for corporations they're done with everything yeah uh believe it or not the united states of america actually collapsed in an, an economic like, crisis and then new united states of america came out of that which is just controlled by the corporations. So, like, these roaming nomads are just groups of people that work for a corporation. They banded together, became a family. There's uh, the, the backers. There's like, there's a bunch of them. There's so many of them. So and you have to one choose a class to start. Uh, yeah, so you, it, it's not really a class. It's like a, it's a life path. And, life and actually, life path. it doesn't determine much. It's just the, your very beginning story. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you, you pick one of those, and then you, you're, you are V. Uh, regardless if you're male or female, you're V. And the, did it, there is a name, I forget it though. And the whole premise is you are going to Night City to make your way. That you're gonna you're gonna get rich, you're gonna become a legend, and you're gonna be like awesome. So you're going to Night City. Your first job is to deliver a package to Night City, and then you meet a guy named Jackie. And this you can actually watch like the first like E3 trailer. I, it pretty much explains the first whole like little segment of the game, which is kind of spoilery. Um, but unfortunately, uh, Jackie dies, um, and your the whole the whole mission was to go into an Arasaka 
like corpo like head corpo's off it like yeah. home and steal a package with like a it's like a small little like almost like a usb drive almost yeah um and they don't you don't know what's on it you don't know what it is but it has to be cool because it overheats like it's really hot and unless it, unless it's like running and what happens is the package it's in gets damaged in like this crazy fight and like the guy's like you need to like put it in your neck like you need to use it like you need to keep it good because that's like that's your ticket out of night city so when you put it in you don't realize it right away um it's actually johnny silverhand's like mind so you, you now have johnny silverhand in your head Who you don't johnny realize it right away johnny silverhand is uh keanu reeves uh He's okay. his character. He's, yeah, he's, uh, he's like a legendary character from like the lore of yeah, cyberpunk. He, he used to be a the singer of a band or the guitar player of a band that was like anti like corpo, anti this and all that stuff, very gotcha. rebellious. And he was actually like a I forget what they call him. He was basically a terrorist. He used to attack corporations, do bombings and things like that. And the whole premise of the story is uh, there's multiple endings, so like you can side with Johnny to like blow up arasaka and destroy their corporation or you can like convince them not to do that like it's your your time's done it's that's the past now and all this other all those other things so like there's multiple like paths you can choose to finish the game uh i'm kind of going on a tangent here <laughs> but yeah, but, uh, yeah so it's very open-ended like what you can do right like that's yeah. Yeah. oh it's very open-ended you yeah. pick your path and you're just kind of playing so do you do edge running at all like is that a thing like where you yeah just yeah, take yeah. There's, there's, and... there's 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 side there's side jobs there's missions there are, like fi- uh, faraday was a fixer and you you come in contact with multiple different fixers from multiple different districts of the city that give you different jobs and will sell you like different vehicles from like different areas and stuff like that so yeah there there is that aspect um the only thing is that, like, once you do all the jobs in that area, that that's kind of it, which is kind of disappointing. But then again, a mod could fix that. They could add in random jobs you can get, I'm sure. the Another concept for the game was it was actually going to be multiplayer. There was going to be a multiplayer aspect to it. And I, I figured it was just going to be either just co-op or some, like, really, the worst case scenario, just some crappy deathmatch, team deathmatch yeah. modes. Yeah, which, yeah. Which would have been terrible. Um, but I was sitting there like watching the anime and like looking like, you know, they're, they're doing, they're, they're doing odd jobs. They're trying to make their way and making money. And I thought like, you know, what would be amazing would be cyberpunk, but GTA online where you do yeah, jobs, yeah, yeah. money, you buy businesses, you buy cars, you buy like all this guns and stuff. And like, if they did that, like it would be like the biggest game of all time. It would probably, it would probably beat out GTA online. I mean, yeah, that's, a hard, that's, a hard, that's a hard punch like punch for is to beat out GT online with player base and, and profit. But if they if they made Cyberpunk online and it was just GTA online, but Cyberpunk, it would be amazing. Yeah, that could be really fucking cool. OK, so that's a good premise. I, I now understand what kind of game it is because I never knew anything about it outside of the bugs. So it's, it's good to just hear it for people who are like me. About yeah, bugs, no. I went on a tangent about all this other stuff. So, bug wise, as you saw, there's a lot of graphical bugs. Oh, wait, 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 before you talk about the bugs, um, are you done talking about any of the spoilers so I can bring Cheyenne back? Because uh, oh, he's got no, the- let's let's leave him out. Let's let's leave him out, you know, like we're good with him. <laughs> uh, you can bring him back in. Um, Ew. welcome yeah. back. All right, so on the on to the bugs now. So I'm going to post uh, two screenshots so you guys can see and try to describe. So here is one bug of an AI <laughs> just underneath the ground. And he can shoot you, <laughs> no. but you can't shoot him. Wow, that was, yeah. That, I encountered that often. And you can that just was, see was... the outline. So basically, you can see the outline of an enemy, and he's underground. And you, there's no way to interact with him, but he's <laughs> still able to shoot you. It looks almost like a, like a wall hack, where like you could see yes. the walls. Yes, it looks exactly and he's like, like that. Underneath of yeah, it's just an outline of his body. Here, here's another AI. This this is where I was just fed up with it. Like he, the AI went behind cover, and just stayed there. Didn't shoot. Didn't move. He would still talk and communicate. Like I'm gonna kill you. I'll get you. And like it was just there. And they this, he was did just not stand in there. Anything. Honestly, this type of shit starts to freak me out after a while. Like <laughs> I, I imagine playing right, this man. game really late at night, and just too <laughs> many glitches will start to make me feel like. 
I'm in a simulation in real life. Like, I don't know why, but that has always been a thing for me when I was younger, because I used to hack a lot of my things. Like I, and not only just hack, but I used to also always use like cheat codes and game shark and uh, action replay. And right. sometimes when you did that and like went into debug mode and stuff, it oh, would some glitch. weird shit would happen. Dude. Um, me and Kenny, we used to explore like missing now on Pokemon and yes. all the like. There's like deep lore on. Missing That's what now. I'm saying. That like, shit starts yeah. to creep me out after a while. For example, in Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time, one of the games I played the most in my life, uh, Game Shark allow you to press L to levitate, and that allows you to skip major parts of the game and end up in places that you should not be and also go places that are literally not designed like they did not put anything in this space so you should not be here but when you do go there it will just put you in a black room but like there will be that weird creepy sludge enemy that just like sucks you up and just starts sucking your life away if you don't butt mash it'll just be like one of those in a room of just darkness and that type of shit just creeps me the fuck out it's just it's like this weird feeling of exploring shit that Maybe the developers don't even know it was there. It's like I shouldn't appeal it's, back the curtain, yeah. right? Like it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I should not be back seeing. The curtain, I shouldn't yeah. be seeing this. So uh, that's yeah. a, a thing. Like the the, the Ocarina of Time when I when I played that, that when I was a kid, what scared the living fucking shit zombies? Remember those zombies no. in that one I mean, time that would cause the game? Too? The hand. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh, yeah. they would grab you all, up. And that was I I was terrified of those things, but they were so scary. Bungo, uh, bungo, yeah, bungo, 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 bungo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That there's was, there's also, for tricky. me, the part that always scared me in Ocarina of Time was the fucking spiders, man. I hated those things. Ugh. Yeah, I, we have a friend, and I got so mad at him because um, he's only ever beaten, like, one Zelda game. And he said, like, he loved it. There was so much about it that he really enjoyed. And I was like, oh, cool. You gotta, you know, try some of these other Zelda games, like Ocarina of Time. And so he went and played Ocarina of Time, and he couldn't beat, like, the first dungeon, the Great yeah. Deku Tree. And he was just stuck on it. And I was like, dude, what the fuck? And then he was like, <laughs> and he, he literally was just like, I'm scared of spiders. I was like, they're not real. Who, who is like, this? Who is this? I'm not going to say their name. Why? I was, like, I was like, dude, it's a video game. Like, they're not real. You have a sword. You can kill the spiders. And he was just like, no, man. Like, I can't I can't play that game. I'm scared of spiders. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? I, mean, I, I, I empathize with I'm him just... to some degree. Like, I made it through Ocarina of Time several times. But no matter what, every time there was a spider, and you know how like getting finding yeah. all the spiders is a big part of Ocarina of Time. Like it never got easier for me just like killing those things. Cause at first the white mass spiders, when you hit them, they turn to the back and then you can actually attack them for real. I yeah. just never I never and how big they are. I just hated it. But Bill, you want to show these guys? You want to show yeah, these guys grounded? No, no, no. Or, yeah, uh... there's a game called Grounded. It's very <laughs> friendly. There's no spiders in it. No spiders know? at it's, all in that it's, game. It's, it's it's nice. You know, it's very yeah. calm. No, in all seriousness, they are the most horrifying spiders I've ever seen in the video game. Oh my like, god! The, the, the noises they make, oh, yeah, just like, like, it, it instills fear in your soul. It's crazy. <laughs> I can't tell how big that spider is to like your perspective. Let me see if I can get a gif. It's massive. Like if it's huge. They're That's afraid. A, really Here's big. a gif. Here's another gif of like, they're just it's fucking horrifying, like, <laughs> and you just have to run away from it. Like, yeah, it's a for me. <laughs> the cool thing is though, if you do have a fear of spiders, there is uh, arachnophobia settings, which just makes them a cute little blob. Oh wow! Wow. Uh, so yeah, they so knew like, that people have. Okay, that's that's yeah. interesting. That games would even bother with that. Yeah. So real quick, I wanted to jump back. Um, to Cheyenne. So no, I, you oh, know, okay. he, he doesn't get an opinion. Well, no, I'm just yeah. So I'm, I'm interested, and I, I'm also curious if you know anything we've talked about maybe right. swayed you in any way. But uh, nope, nope. <laughs> I'm just curious. Yeah, I, I really am curious because I feel like this is like if there was it ever be me, right? Like I'm. If there was I'm ever an anime cyberpunk man, we're like. Here's what I expected, right? In an alternate universe is that, or in the correct universe, I'm, you're currently from an alternate universe. In the correct <laughs> universe, I expected you to just like bother, bother everybody. Like, to watch it. Cyberpunk. Like it's the wire. Fucking, like it's, it's like the, the wire. Anime. Yeah. anime sucks. This is the best one. Nah. <laughs> like that, that's yeah. what I hold. I mean, that, that is what should have happened. And, There's no reason that should have happened. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Go all ahead. Right, so, so, so like, all right. So up to maybe episode like four or five, I was, I wasn't super sucked in. I didn't even really dislike it, but I was like middle of the road. I was like, I, I want to see where it's going. Like, I don't, I don't feel super strong, but like, I think for me, it's like, I feel like nine, there's just too much fucking action. Like 90% of it is like heads fucking exploding. Like it's just, you keep, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Like, 
at a certain point, it's like, dude, like there was one point where I, I was, I thought Bill would even agree with me. Cause I was like, they were going down the highway and there was just like, I think it was like David was like firing like fucking guns on a highway. And he was like, like a tank or something. I don't know. I don't oh, know what happened. You want me to go over that scene? I know what scene you're talking about. Just, so yeah, it's, just really quick. David, it's when they steal the corp, the aristocrat corpus car and Lucy's in the passenger seat and they're just like down the highway. Two, right? No, no, it's nah, way it's later. Like it's three or four. No, no, yeah. it's well, like it's like episode like eight or nine or something. Like really? It's, yeah, because I remember like it was our third oh, time. Oh, it's at the end. It's at the end. Yeah. Okay, that scene. Like, yeah, you're talking about when he's in the exosuit with, with McCree in the car. I think it was like <laughs> exosuit thing or whatever. Yeah, he, and McCree, I was just... McCree was driving, right? McCree. Yeah, McCree was driving. McCree was driving, <laughs> and I was just like, I was like. Bill, this is fucking like I'm. I gotta be honest, this is fucking stupid. It, it is a Bill, little ridiculous. It was. It was. But that was when it was like this show is fucking dumb. Yeah. Like, the cars were flying in the sky. It just. It's like. I thought you were talking about the scene where he used the Sandeva stand to make that like ninety degree turn when he's doing like hundred and twenty miles an hour, and it's just like a. I, but I, that's the thing. Like, twenty degree turn. That probably. Like, that probably did happen, and I still can't remember because it was like sensation overload. Like it's like. Yeah. There's fucking too much explosions and gun and like I'm we'll, we'll chill for a little bit. Like there was no character development. Like we'll chill with the characters. They'll talk for a little bit on to the next job. But like I feel like there was no character development. I didn't really care about episodes, any character. They had to fit a lot. I know that. I know that. But we're still like Madoka Magic is like a twelve episode, and that's fucking great. Like I, I don't know. I mean, like I don't think because it's ten episodes that it should get a pass on like. When other things that are ten episodes can be better, like that's but, that's true. You are right about that. There are some short animes that are in my top five of all time. Yeah, like, like Death Parade oh, it could have been one of those. I, Death Parade, too, I think that was like a good example. Like I wasn't blown away, but I thought it was definitely like if you were to compare Death Parade to this anime, it's it's in a league of its own. Like it's so much better. Yeah. Where like I I just did not like this anime, and it's like it sucks because like I thought it was imitating ghost in the shell like it didn't feel like an homage it didn't and like it was almost like how much video game shit can we sneak in like oh look they're in the dumps oh look we're using the gun sound effects it was almost like it didn't have its own personality and it's like like it was so like it wanted to fit in as much video game shit but just to like wrap up because i don't want to like harp on it forever i just i i there was too much action for me to give a shit and it, it was like a good example of like an action movie to me would be like the matrix maybe or like john wick like something where like there's just enough context to propel that action forward and i feel like it, it, i had somebody tell me one of my friends said she goes it's actually a romance anime and i was like oh let's fucking relax let's relax mm, it's yeah. not a, it, there's it's a romantic a, aspect but it, the, the yeah. whole, it, it's it's such a bare bones well, romance a romance anime too, like, in my opinion should end happily because it wants it wants the viewer I mean, to not, be like, not even necessarily hearted. that but i just i wasn't invested in almost anything there's and not I yeah hate to i, say I, I agree like, with I wasn't in a invested. sense that like, you can't really say we all started this podcast off at the very beginning of it saying how like it's just not enough time to really feel much for the characters as they die off it's kind of like yeah, like I get it. Main is like his bro like big brother figure, whatever like that. But even when he died, even when Dario died, stuff like that, yeah, I had anxiety, like hoping that I was wrong. But when they did die, I just kind of was like, all right, like that guy's dead. And as the next yeah. person would die, I was like, all right, well, that person's dead. And then when like Rebecca died, I was like, damn, that's fucked up. But like, yeah, she's dead. <laughs> it, and I knew that she was gonna die because after I saw what Adam was doing, and I was like, this is the last episode. It, when people like I I cannot agree that it's a romance. It is not a romance. Anime. Yeah, so anyone who's yeah. saying that is just being ridiculous i think because it's just not a romance like yes there yeah. is a romance element in it right like there's a love interest or whatever but it's not enough to call it a full-on romance anime like that would just that just sounds ridiculous like it is this is an action anime like this is very clearly an action anime it's very punk it's very like colorful and uh all about like the action sequences and choreography of them but i wouldn't say that you could completely discard the characters all together like i actually relate to david's life like even though it was only a very short anime i still have there's still things in it that like i relate to that and that resonates with me for example like i went to private school my whole life and 
it was hard for my family to pay the tuition. Like they had to make sacrifices, stuff like that in order to pay for me to go to school. I didn't know uh, that. in a private life. Like I, I didn't, I wasn't born rich. I didn't have a silver spoon or anything like that. So my parents had to sacrifice to send me to Catholic school. And I went to Catholic school from literally pre-K all the way up to college. Like all the first 21 years of my life, I was in Catholic school. And so like, I know what it's like to have your parents working extra jobs and like just doing a whole bunch of shit to make sure that your tuition's paid and that you get your education and like a school that they feel like will set you up to literally how David says my mom wanted me to be at the top of the Arasaka building. My mom basically was trying to set me up to like climb the corporate ladder, which coincidentally is exactly what I'm doing in real life right now. It's like I'm an accountant for God's sakes. Like that is literally oh, what her corpo. Yeah, like I am a corpo. fucking corpo freezer. And it, it's just like I can resonate to like the idea of your parent making these sacrifices and just wanting the best for you, but you also being a rebellious kid because kids are just like that, right? Like I think most kids are just naturally you get to a certain age and you just start to rebel against what your parents want for you. You're like, I don't want that for myself. Like I want my own path. I, I want to do this. Isn't what I want. This is what you want it for me, right? And that's kind of how David feels in the beginning. Like when he's going to school, he's like, all right. Like I'm going to like, he gets into fights with that fucking snobby ass rich kid and, Hell yeah. and like all types of shit like that. Like I just resonate with like that entire thing, of, like not fitting in completely because you're just not from the same, like to not sugarcoat this. I went to school mm. with a lot of white kids who were very affluent, meaning they had money, like a lot of money. Like when they turned 16, they were literally given like BMWs and, and, Audis and, and Mercedes, yeah. like not even, not even just a car dog. Like they were given luxury vehicles like i remember yeah. when we like going like junior year i'm 16 because i graduated high school at 17 years old so in junior year i'm 16 and like a lot of the kids like had a sweet 16 parties where they would just be given a luxury vehicle or like even if it wasn't actually their vehicle it was like their parents but their parent allowed them to drive to school every day for whatever like it was an extra car that they had daddy it's whatever. not a lamborghini I want my Lamborghini. It's my Swiss city. I can't. We didn't have anyone that. that was that rich, like Lamborghini rich, but like just to be able, like at 16 driving a Mercedes, like the current that's year's Mercedes, insane, dude. that's pretty fucking that's a, rich. That's an adult vehicle. Hold that's on. a very, it's a Hold luxury on. vehicle. And Wait, so that's like a CEO car. You yeah. guys didn't get a Bugatti at your 16th no. birthday? But like my <laughs> point is like, I just found the characters relatable because I live in a big city. I see a lot of crime and stuff like that. Like it's very like Philadelphia and night city and New York city are probably just like all the same thing. Like they're much yeah, it might, it might have some similarities. Oh, they definitely have similarities. Like you mentioned the kids just walking around and like, there's no adult around. Like that's a real thing. Like people struggling to make ends meet is a real thing. People like scamming, frauding, stealing, doing all kinds of like shady night activities and things like that. People just getting like shot just in see, the head. You'll see killed. like a fucking six year old walking around with an Elmo shirt and a shotgun. It's like, yep. how the fuck is this kid? <laughs> it's an Elmo shirt and a shotgun. How's he out here? Doing real life. Shit? It's crazy, but it's like <laughs> real life. The, I just pushed a screenshot from the game. It's actually, it's neat. It's actually scripted. Those are the kids in a class and that's their teacher. And she, they're going around Arasaka Plaza explaining an incident that happened in the past to the kids like a class mm -hmm. and it was just so good i thought it was so cool to see that like oh that's so wild like it's a school field trip like in the game yes, like, and you are observing it cool. as much as you want to and you can clearly walk yeah. away from it and it still is going on without you yeah exactly yeah i love just, games just that have a, the kids. i love games that have a living ecosystem that doesn't necessarily need you like the, the first game that ever showed that to me and i still even though i'm sure there are but like i still feel like nothing ever did it the same was majora's mask I still, to this day, I feel like there has never been a game that has captured like a day, night, like 72 yeah. hour cycle as good as Majora's Mask. Like no matter where you it's, are in the game, there's something happening in that world at an exact time. You know what's really smart about that? Because you are right to a degree. What's really smart about it is that it's only three days. So yeah, the yeah, from true. a developer standpoint, it's not a nightmare because these characters don't have to have full lives. Yeah. They, just, they just need to exist for 72 hours. And it's not even actual 72 hours. It's 72 hours in the game's time. So like, Yes, they have complete, sure it's a complete, too, yeah. Majora's Mask has a complete ecosystem that does not require you at all. Like you can do nothing for all three days and it, all the things that are happening around you, like the old lady getting stolen from and stuff like that, that stuff is going to happen regardless of you being there or not. Like you could not witness it, you could help her, you could not help her, like it's going to happen, but it's easier to do that. And obviously we're talking about the Nintendo 64, so like this is 20 years ago, but like it's easier to do that when you're designing it for a fake short 72 hours as opposed to now 2022 games like cyberpunk and shit like that they go on days and days and yeah, days of time apparently by the way um 72 hours of majora's mask is 54 minutes 
didn't know my that. point that's my exact point so yeah think, yeah exactly like, think yeah. about how short of development and like don't get me wrong for its time though it is groundbreaking what like majora's mass accomplished and it's one of it's definitely one of like the best zelda games ever but at the same time i think that like when you say and i, I think you even said this like there are probably games that have done it better maybe but for you the best one that you've ever seen do it yeah, was majora's yeah, mass yeah. but for sure by now there oh are there's there have living, to be there yeah there are games with be. a living ecosystem that don't require you and that are having like longer than 54 minutes of things happening uh just yeah. regardless of you being there so but i do like it i wanted to real quick and then talk about what cheyenne said um about some of his complaints and just kind of give my perspective on them and then like you know at the end of the day everybody's own perspective is what it is yep yeah but um from my point of view in terms of like the character development and the action uh and the character development aspect is something that i think in terms of a broader thing is that's something that I hear people talk about a lot in a lot of things is somebody be like, oh, that's terrible. There wasn't character development. And I th- there's we we've developed this obsessive society where like there has to be this fucking big character arc with all these characters in order for something to be good. And I don't think that's necessarily true. I think like there are stories that tell different stories. And like, for example, mm-hmm. this story wasn't a character development story. In fact, the 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 purpose of it was kind of the fact that like these people don't learn from their mistakes and they fall into these tragedies it's and that's how their lives more end. more about because Night they, City than it is about the characters. Yeah, and so, like, they don't grow and learn from their mistakes and develop because that's kind of the point. That's what leads them to their death. And then you could you could also even argue, like, somebody like David, his character development is the fact that he is spiraling downward and, like, not yeah. growing. And, like, yeah, he, he goes from this just be so like, one as innocent. Yeah, and he and he ends up a fucking gangster. It's supposed to just be like a small snapshot of like one of millions of stories of Night City, and that's like though that is one thing I do like about it. Yeah, like, yeah. Like Night City, though, I I'm gonna be like well, I haven't even beaten the first fucking game. I'm waiting for them to currently. They said they're gonna overhaul the cop system, which is just fucking nonsense. But they're gonna redo <laughs> it, and once they do that, I'm finally gonna play through the game after fucking two years of I've owned the game for two years, waited for like fucking a year before a year or two so it'd be like a long time since i want to play this game but um the fuck was my point i don't fucking know like um it, it's like every everybody the, it's like small little stories like this is, and this story is just nothing like edge runners yeah it's just of like it's just a thing that happened well, it's just that's like how, a group of people yeah i think that's how you should take it though like i think that that is the point like kenny yeah yeah same i, same. I, 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 so I agree too, with though. kenny to a degree like i think that try not to focus too much on these specific characters and focus more so on the overarching themes like losing your humanity to cybernetics the tragedy of night city like how it consumes you uh losing your innocence and like descending into a world where you feel like the only way i can actually live and survive is that i have to do these things like edge running and like net running and all that stuff so just those overarching concepts like again losing your humanity to cybernetics like how people slowly like david starts off what they called organic. Like they make fun of him for it. Like you get, he yeah. got teased for being organic. Like he hit somebody yeah. with the Sandy <laughs> and he did fuck the person up, but he hurt himself. Yeah, they're just and like, then, oh, look at this fucking guy with two eyeballs over here. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> sure. There's not much development for like Maine and David and their relationship and stuff like that. And it does happen. Everything happens really quick with like Maine dies episode five and then episode six, time <laughs> skip. You know, David is now Maine. Yeah. Like all of that happens fast, but I don't think that the point of this was like, Oh, these characters, we want you to be hardcore attached to them. And they knew that going right. into the writing because they killed them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they didn't <laughs> intend for you to have this great big, like, oh my God, man, David was like my fucking dog, David and Yagami and- Light. Like, it's not supposed to be like uh-huh. like Death Note clearly focuses on Yagami Light as a person. Like how I, he is as I a person. I mean, for example, when you asked like when you asked like who is our favorite and least favorite, me and Fraser ended up having a similar opinion that like we don't I don't have a favorite yeah, character, I really don't. really. It's... And I don't have a least favorite character because even though I enjoyed the characters, the show wasn't about necessarily their character development. It was just like about the show. It was about yeah, Cyberpunk yeah. and about Night, Night City. Like you said, this and one so, incident, Shane, it's just like this one snapshot like, of like isolated something happening. Sort of, yeah. Like basically, they all got killed off by Adam Smasher and most of the city won't even know or care. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Going, they just don't know. To, it's just another story. Going yeah. back to like David dying. So like, in order to become a legend in Night City, is you have you basically you have to die. Yeah, and you have to die yeah. in a glorious way. 
And, people definitely uh, know David. When right? that people happens, talking about him. And, and when that happens, there's a club, the the Afterlife Club, is an, like an edge running like bar club. In that the uh, bar, when a legend dies, they get a drink named after oh, them. So, cool. so I'm hoping when I go to play that game, you can order David's drink. That would be. Wait, really when you cool. go to play what game? Cyberpunk. Do you like? You're gonna patch it in? You think? Oh yeah, I'm, yeah I'm sure already, they already, they already announced that they're doing that, Kenny. That's what oh that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be it's so cool. You could, like, you could like drink the Martinez and it's just like a Corona. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it'd be whatever drink he likes, which would probably be non-alcoholic <laughs> and non-fizzy because he couldn't handle those drinks. Yeah, that's funny. So, but yes, it, they definitely already I said... What is seltzer water? Yeah. <laughs> I, I did see that they were going to uh, be adding like stuff from Edge Runners because the show has revitalized the game. Yeah, oh, which is, made I'm me, happy about. Like, it made me more... So for the, the Cyberpunk game initially i think it's cool like the concept and stuff but i had no i had no faith in the game because it was in dev hell for fucking 10 years yeah. and then like it came out and it had you know all the it kept, it got delayed like seven times and they were like it's not going to get delayed and then it got delayed again and then uh all that bullshit and then like everybody pre-ordered it it came out and it was a buggy mess and it's one of those examples of like why we shouldn't pre-order a lot of games because we're just like giving these developers money and then they put out games that Still need two more years in the oven, right? Let, let's, let's just patch that right there, so you don't like piss off any devs that are in, like listening. It's not the devs' fault; it's the true. management's fault. No, 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 that's true. That's true. It's not game to release time, and the devs are like, it's not ready, and they're like, that's true. Be bad. The stockholders want their fun. They want their money. No, that's yeah, because like Anthony, for example, he works on movies and commercials. He's a dev, you could argue, for like a TV show, right. and. When something's fucked up, it's not that he did it wrong. It's you. It's usually that they didn't give him enough time or enough budget or whatever in order to do the job properly. Um. So anyway, that said, when Cyberpunk finally did come out, uh, I thought the game was cool. Like I watched Cheyenne stream it. I watched some other people play it, and like there's a lot about that game that I think is cool. It just was riddled with a lot of problems. Um. Like I'll be honest. Like if you like like the aspect like Monster Hunter, you have to make builds, right? You have to get gear. You have to upgrade. Yeah. That yeah. Gear. Same thing with Cyberpunk. It's the same concept. You have to get gear. Yeah, no, the, craft like, stuff. it's really interesting. And then my point is, though, is all the problems with the game, like, really fucking turned me off. Not that I was planning on buying it anyway, but this anime, like, I really drew me in. And I was like, I really, really liked it. And it's one of those things where it's like, man, I would love to play a Cyberpunk game. Like, almost ignoring the fact that one exists. <laughs> it's like, I would love to play a Cyberpunk I... game. I wanted to say this to you guys. So we're close to the two hour mark. So we're going to start wrapping up. Yeah. But one of the things that I was thinking about is how do you guys feel about the idea in real life of modding yourself with cybernetics, like cyberware and stuff? Like, would you be into that kind of thing? You think we uh, going to get there though, where we were like, we are going to do that. Like yeah, I fully we, fucking how believe. You, how do you feel about it? Cause we, we, I, me and you Cheyenne, we will be yeah. dead. Like, like unfortunately whoa, whoa, we were born freedom, too early buddy all right speak for yourself i'm gonna be the first mod i'm gonna be modded out i'm sorry to tell you but we are we are far too uh but we were born far <laughs> too <laughs> early when it, when to it comes it. down to cybernetics like we actually are there we have limbs that you know if you have if you lose an arm you can get us like a limb that would help you i, I, okay. you can, I was at walmart today about... and i saw a guy with a peg leg <laughs> no, I mean, I swear to God, I swear to God, I swear to God, the fuck is that? Like, seen today. modern, like, modern, like, I want to take know, a picture of like things and stuff, though. Okay, like, so it's, it's pretty advanced. No, 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 no. So I, you're you're completely. You guys are completely misinterpreting what I'm no, saying. No, no, we we we're yeah, fucking around. Like, like we. Yeah, so I'm, I'm talking about in the context of this podcast, which yeah. is on cyberpunk, and you see the shit that they right. have. We don't have anything even near that. Like, yeah, I can get a fucking robot leg or whatever you want, a prosthetic leg or whatever, and it can help me run in the Special Olympics. It is nowhere near close to the legs that can literally right. fire off actual weaponry and make me jump on top of a fucking building and shit like that. Like, it's not. I'm talking about yeah. cyberpunk. Like I'm talking All about right, the shit they yeah. have in Cyberpunk. Would you be willing to mod? Like, would you be willing to do that type of thing I, to your body? I, my it's thing also is pain. yes. Keep in mind that it is I'll, very say, I'll say yes if it's the aspect of like if we were in Cyberpunk. Yeah, absolutely, because that's the only way to survive. Well, okay. well no, no, and like even in our world though, like I would do it as long as it doesn't fuck with my brain and it's it cannot possibly be connected 
to anything that could interfere with it, like hacks Whoa. and shit. Because, like, dude, gross. there's hacks out there right now. I like I've I've watched videos on it where you can hack a Tesla and like slam on the fucking brakes. I was like, if your car just talking hot, about that. What really? How yeah, you can I was hack talking, in the cars? I would. Know? Yeah, I was talking about that to my friend. I said eventually uh, all cars will be self-driving. Like they will be able to just drive themselves because that's what Teslas do, and that's like the future, right? But I said, do you know how bad it's going to be when people start hacking electric vehicles and just like making them do shit to cause accidents or not even yeah, cause like accidents, you can, just, like, you can scare the absolutely person. you can hack in the cars now it's just i'm gonna guess like tesla has like the foremost security experts because like you it's just possible like i've seen videos of people hacking in a car and you could just turn on the brakes yeah 100%, you can do whatever you want i mean you can, anything car, electronic you can, can be hacked right and then, like, but that's, that's just... like, but i think that's almost like the very first not counting like hacking into like hospitals or cutting off pa- generators and shit but, yeah. like that is probably one of the early earlier first times in our life where like you can hack something and directly harm someone yes like because right now yeah right now we're all organic human beings like we don't have mods to our bodies or anything like that but in cyberpunk like you can be hacked and somebody could fucking emp did you see in cyberpunk when an emp went off that one guy they tried to attack him and he just fucking emp'd the whole area he was just like all of you guys are cut off like that. So on one hand, yes, you are more powerful than any human like right now in the year 2022, like in the year 2090 or whatever, whenever this happens, like you are way more advanced than like we are right now. But it comes at a cost of like cybersecurity needing to be really, really strong and how it affects your brain. Right. Because like all of the way the brain works is like electric signals get sent down and that controls your limbs and everything like that. And it's the reason right. why you're alive. But like it can just get really, really scary. Just the concept of it. Like on one hand, yeah, it's cool and easy to say like, yeah, I would definitely mod myself. But at the same time, there are people in the cyberpunk world that were not cyberware freaks. Like his mom, for example, was just a regular person. Like she was a regular person. Yeah, but, uh, another thing in the lore, there's actually people that just don't have cyberware and they, it's because it's religious reasons. Uh, yes, actually, which will be uh, in real life too. Yeah, there's there's monks you encounter in the game that like they don't preach it but like they're just like they, they said they, their body has to remain pure and they're vehemently like, against it i'm sure like they're... And, and real quick go to our private message right here now and then i want to bring you back to that i want to bring it all the way back to the <laughs> fucking that's what i saw at walmart today i saw a guy walking on a fucking peg leg with <laughs> wow <laughs> and he's just i was just i wanted to take a picture of it so bad but that's like, that's like exactly so what he had this he looks, walking on that this does, this does not look comfortable to me because i imagine I, my foot falling asleep like my leg falling asleep being in that position it's for too fucking long. bizarre i was just like why why is what is this i, I imagine he, i imagine he could only be like that for a certain amount of time because blood flow like that like you can't you just can't get the right blood flow with your leg being bent like that for but that's like it, it's either he's on the cutting edge and he's further than all of us in no, his this is pursuit not, no. to become a cyberpunk or he's behind us like <laughs> no, years no. several decades behind us Here, on a fucking pirate this ship guy with a peg leg this guy is either, it's either right, a peg right. leg or it's a cyber leg and i don't know which one it is the, on, the, on that all, all that note now like you know adam, adam smasher right he's he's a the beast. pinnacle he's the he's pinnacle, the pinnacle. There is actually someone leagues ahead of him. And I mean, what? Leagues. Like Adam Smasher would see this guy and just not even confront confront him. And here's a picture of him. Oh, this is going to be Savage. No, no, no. It's not a or... meme. This guy is his name's Savage. Oh, my God. He looks like um, Michael <laughs> from GTA 5. <laughs> Look, here he is. There's a closer up of him. Adam Savage or Adam Savage, that's the guy from Mythbusters. Adam or Smasher would not fuck with Savage. Look at him. What is he has flip flops on and blue shorts? He has a tattoo across his chest that says Savage. He has uh, Daisy Duke cutoffs like Anthony wears quite often. And they're (laughs) not quite often. Quite often. And they're they're bleached. And he has little sandals, like cyber sandals. Look at the sandals. Those are future wear right there. Oh Frazier's like, God. oh my God, I I'll say this. Clothes. Not like know, this. Notice this man has no cyberware. No cyberware and at all. That's what I, that was the fuck first fuck thing I noticed is that the guy doesn't have cyberware. He has cyber oh. flip flops, though. He, he's not a complete fucking. But, um. <laughs> I, <laughs> look at him. Oh, shit. He's incredible. But that's a guy you see in the game, and like we've just fallen in love with him. Like he's been a joke between me and Bill for like fucking years at this point. Like we love him so much. I saw him, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like I'm gonna. I I, I saw him in the game. I was like, "I can't beat this guy." Like he's gonna. He's gonna he's go on a 
he, 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 he goes by Savage. You know? But um, in terms of getting cybernetic enhancements, I I'd probably do it. Like if it was legit possible, like. I don't know what parts of my body I would want to get cyberly, cybernetically enhanced. Like, I'm thinking, like, arms and legs, but... I yeah, I guess for me, it would only, it would only really be arms and legs and maybe, like, chest area where your heart is so that your heart is probably more protected. But yeah. other than that, I'm probably good. Like, obviously, I want to keep my penis and, like, my ass and stuff well, like that. That's like, what I was just going to ask. Would you gentlemen want to get any maybe sexual cyber? No, nah, oh, I think nah, I'm, because I'm black, so, like, I'm fine there. Get whatever that thing that guy had on in episode one. I'll get yeah, that. I mean, Frazier, <laughs> we're white. Like, we got to maybe maybe us white guys. Gotta I mean, some guys pants. are definitely going to my like, their junk, and that's fine. Yeah, that do good. you. Yeah. Only, Women do it right now. Though. Women mod themselves right now. Here's that's the what thing, I was though. saying. Uh, like, would it still that? have like feeling? That's like, that's if it, thing. if it doesn't feel good, then I don't care. Like, well, I'm, it's like you know all, I mean? it's all roped into your brain. And it's like tied I, in. You yeah, know? I'm the same way. Like, I'm not doing any mods to like my yeah, sexual areas. Happening. If it's not, if I'm not going to feel it, like that's just not. But then I yeah. imagine though, I imagine that because the brain actually controls like what you feel and like what you perceive and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. There's probably in in cyberpunk world anyway. And as advanced as their technology is, I imagine if you gave yourself a fake penis in that world, like that it shit would, could it would. Yeah, I think that it would it would trick your brain into making you feel the the synapses of like pleasure and things like that. Like it wouldn't be yeah a robo dick. Yeah, yeah a robo dick. Yeah, Just, I'm sure people would be, be into all that. Them, yeah. I mean, people people genuinely get all kinds of mods now, like the BBL craze, like a bunch of people getting BBLs, both men and women actually. Oh god, what yeah, what Brazilian brunt lifts. BBL. That's a uh, okay. Brazilian, but so that's when they take the fat out your stomach and put it in your ass, and so you see like Kim Kardashian and like all her sisters and like a lot of the celebrities allegedly have like those procedures done to them where their butts all of a sudden are just like huge and they have that that ants life figure like that really exaggerated figure that no human being actually thing. have. Yes, they look yeah. like everything from a bug's life. I'm thinking I want a dick like that. It'd be like a drill. You see sure what I mean? Could... I just linked it. I think I want to get a dick like a that. drill dick. Not you linking it. That looks painful. That does not look pleasurable. Sometimes you need a little pain with your pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, are you talking to the wrong yeah. guy? <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, um, well, I, I'll leave the the floor open if you guys want to say anything else. Otherwise, we can start to like like wrap up. I got nothing. I'll, yeah, I mean, I'll just I don't know what else to say. I'll just say that uh, I, we've already said it, but um, I really appreciated the the show, the series. I really like the feel. Um. I want more anime to feel like this. I j I really like the old nostalgic feel of this show. Yeah, and the newer style anime is obviously great, but I do miss things that felt like this. Um, the music, the way it looked, the 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 stylization of it, every it just felt really comfortable. I liked it a lot. I liked the story. Um, and it's been a while since I saw an anime that like I kind of felt sad at the end, and. Yeah, I don't know. I just I liked it a lot. I thought yeah, it was really I'll, good. I'll, I'll say that, like at the end, like I I, I was like, um, I, I I unfortunately before I watched it, I got spoiled of my favorite character dying, which was like I knew that was going to happen. I didn't know when it was going to happen. I'm glad she lasted all the way till the end. Yeah. Um. So that unfortunately got spoiled for me. But like, dude, the way she died, you're talking about Rebecca. Yeah, she was just dude. The way her. she died was like. I, like once bad. again at that point i kind of accepted the fact that everybody was going to die but Same. i had the anxiety of hoping that like they wouldn't like some of them will survive dude the she just like gets stepped on like a fucking elephant chasing a lady at a funeral yeah. and I just yeah. like the fuck kind of funeral have you been to yeah, it's, <laughs> also we were recently talking about i don't was that not recorded that was just like a random conversation we had last night so last night we were talking with kenny's cousin stango and like some of our other friends and uh, we were. I brought up that an elephant killed a woman, and then what? showed up to her funeral a week later and and trampled her body in the casket. <laughs> this is a real story that you can Google. There's YouTube oh, and everything. Man. Like this is a real, actual, factual story of a woman being killed by an elephant, and then the elephant shows up to her funeral days later and tramples her. And how absurd it is that like an elephant remembers. That because they always say like no one has a brain like you know, like elephants remember everything that's like a yeah, they <laughs> that elephant was pissed. I, 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 I just kept saying like, what the fuck is this lady? It's what not it's do? not bullshit. It, it's not bullshit. But anyway, that lady uh, must I, be a real bitch to that elephant. Yeah, she, she had the bitch. Hatred. 
But anyway, I cut Bill off, but I, I just wanted to say, like, I wasn't ready for the way she died. And, like, it, that shit, I was like, God damn! And, like, it, was like, it was, like, instantaneous. They she showed it just, three yeah. times, too. She, she, Lily, she had to, we're having a <sighs> fucking moment. Fuck oh, yeah, you. They did, like, a, like, a replay of it. They, like, yeah, it they didn't do that for anyone game. else, I feel like. I feel like that was the only death in the entire anime. I think they, did, they might have done it one other time. I can't remember. Okay, well, I don't remember, but... Hurt, man. I it remember hurt. her getting hit three times by Adam it, Smasher. And you know, I, I'm not even gonna lie. It. When it happened, I was kind of happy because I found her fucking annoying. Oh god! And I kind of just had a smile. I was like, "Yes, yeah, Smasher oh. getting in there." Nah, like I, I don't know, man. Like, for me, like I was just I like it didn't. Before. It didn't affect me at first, but like the next day, I just, it hit different. Like I mean, I was, I was like, really, yeah, I was disappointed. I was like, man, I really wish he made it out. It definitely like, is one of those animes that when it's over and when she was going to the moon and, and earlier in the episodes, they they yo, find out the price of going to the moon and they're like, oh, it's not as expensive as I thought. Like, it's still a lot, but yeah. like, it's it's something that we could actually achieve in our lifetime. And then when she actually goes to the moon and then she fake sees David and everything and they have those reflective helmets ah. that I really love, there is a feeling of sadness at the end of it. Like, there yes, definitely is. Because like, I'll be honest, during that scene, I was like, please don't take off your helmet. Please don't take off your helmet. I, yo, uh, I thought, I thought, no, I thought the same that. thing. I thought I she was going like, to take her helmet take off. Her helmet and like ends it. Like I, I would die. I Dude. would die. Bill, I uh, thought the exact same thing. I thought she was going to take her helmet off, and I was like, "Don't do it, please, God, don't do it." But it's just like a shame, man, because like it's one of those weird things, and it's something that I love about fiction and stories. Is like these people aren't real. It's fake. It's not real. But right. it's interesting that like. You can become invested, and like I just, I like I wanted them to go to the moon together. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I wish they could have got to the moon together, but then like the tragedy of it that is that like only one of them made it out, and it just like it fucking sucks, man. Just sucks. Yeah, I do I find mean, it crazy. I'm, <clears throat> I am in the vast minority though. I think like I kind of looked it up. I think it has a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. All three of you guys like it. A- Good amount. You know? I don't think it's a hundred though. I I really hate Rotten Tomatoes these days. Yeah, because I, know what you mean. It's, I it's, think that that is just like that's cap. Like a hundred is cap. I think a hundred should be reserved for very few things. And I and I just see it. So I actually checked. Um, the League of Legends show has a hundred. Uh, I watched I, like twenty minutes of episode one of that. I thought it was fucking amazing. Only twenty minutes in, but I, I gotta. I think the League of Legends show it. is like better. Than this show, so I don't it think seems they, infinitely I, better. I was, I'm not gonna say infinitely, time. but I will say I think it's blatantly better. Like I think that it's just like the League of Legends show Arcane is a better show than the Cyberpunk show. And what I really don't like is that they have the same rating because, right. to me, and I think to I think a lot of people would agree. I don't think this is a hot take either. I think the League of Legends show is just actually better because it has all things that make a show good, right? But then on top of that, like. How could you say that both of these shows are a perfect hundred? You didn't find anything wrong with Cyberpunk's pacing, like you didn't like it. Just yeah, so like, I, I thought thing. that was kind of crazy though. Like I, I feel like I'm in fucking bizarro world because when I watched it, I just felt nothing. I was like, uh, like I was kind of just, I was getting bored. It man. definitely does okay. not live up to the internet's expectation. The way the internet will make you think that it is like going into it, and this is what I hate about our culture now. Yeah, going into Cyberpunk Edge Runners because of the internet and because I told you I, I have FOMO. And I saw it everywhere. And everybody was saying how insane it was. You didn't want to miss out. I I didn't want to miss out. But more importantly, I was expecting to be blown away. And And I'm going to be honest. I just was not blown away by the show. I thought the show was very entertaining. And I enjoyed watching the show. I did not think that it was like, like blown away for me. I always go back to things like Game of Thrones seasons one, two, three, four, five, six. Like that's blo- like the Red Wedding, blown the fuck yeah, away. Same, like, same. Uh, like the character development of the way Tywin is, the way Tyrion is, the way Daenerys is. Like blown the fuck away. Like right. that is blown away. But when I watched this show, I was like, okay, like it's. I I got what I I got the Night City aspect, I got the tragedy of it, but I I wouldn't say blown away by any means. Like a hundred, no. Like a hundred yeah. is a is mm. hundred means there's no room for improvement. Like I um a hundred should not be given to anything in my opinion. I'll end it there. I like somewhat opposite of Fraser. I wasn't blown away, but um I went into the show not really knowing if I would re- like not really expecting much, not thinking I would be all that. In- like when I went into the show, I was just like watching it, uh, and I ended up liking the show a lot more. Like I went into it with like low expectations, yeah, and I ended up liking a lot more than I thought I was going to. Um, and another like, yeah, draw me in. Like, I think, I think to make it absolutely perfect, I think 16 episodes probably would have been it, but I think, yeah, you, you know, said that. even I at 10, be, I would go further. I'd say like 26. Considering, I said like, 24 because that's what like anime. I don't know if it needs to be that yeah. long. Cause once again, it is just like a snapshot of these 
you know, doesn't need to be. But I think that they could expand on, like, I don't think it matters if it's 16 or 24. If it's yeah, good, yeah. it's good. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's at the end of the day, that's how active. I feel. I think that if it was 16, 24, point. or 12, or 10, or whatever, if it's good, it's good. And I do think that, like, it does some things well, but it we all agree, I think, that the pacing of the show is just not very good. Like, I don't think that that can be, like, avoided. Like, it's just, the pacing is just... I think that they wanted us to feel something so much more for me. I really do. I think that you were supposed to get yeah. a lot more. And I only say that because of the time skip, the way David becomes, he becomes like Maine, but it happens so fast. And I think that there could have been like four episodes of those two, like bonding more, even if it's not necessarily like yeah, episodes yes, dedicated yeah. to just those two, but just how those two work around each other and the life advice that Maine instills into David over and over again and stuff like that. And watching him grow and watching him like have sex with a woman for the first time and things like that. Like all I of that stuff. Watching them. That's All wild. of that stuff could be like more uh like developed and Great. 16, 24, 20, 12, 10, whatever it is, whatever if the, the show is gonna be good, it's gonna be good. But I think that to give something a hundred means there's no room for improvement. And I also well, granted, wanna... granted, Rotten Tomatoes is it's only yeah. a collection of the people that have said it's good yeah, yeah. so far. There's been no negative reviews, yeah. but I get what you're saying. Like it's, yeah. it's like yeah. unrealistic though. And that's it. That's why, like, I would give it a seven or an eight, right? Like, yeah. it's, it's, that's what a hundred. A hundred is a ten. A hundred is a ten. Yeah. <clears throat> like, I would in, give in it my a, gut. You know, like, when I go with my gut, like, I, I, I think I, I linked it earlier in the chat, and I would like you guys to watch it. Like, it, it total would be like I don't know, like seven minutes. It's like when I watch the CGI of the first teaser in 2012, <clears throat> and not, then yeah, the, I've the, seen the, all tra of them. the trailer, and then the the CGI trailer. When I watch those, the feelings I get, I get way more like my brain gets like buzzy in the cyberpunk regions like i get so much more into it than i did with the anime like and i i just think i'm i gotta be honest i just think it was a bad anime man like for so for me yeah. like maybe like a three or four i, wanna, like I just i just don't want to talk good. about something that kenny said as, as like my last statement i guess yeah. um because this is something that happens often and i don't want it to get misconstrued with me as a person for long time listeners of this podcast so i went into this like i go into most things which is i see what the internet is saying about it so if it's not like house of the dragon for example is a show that i was anticipating without the internet's involvement like i didn't need the internet to make me yeah, yeah, want yeah, to yeah, but like Cyberpunk, I was oh, never going sure. to watch. I would never right, watch the show right. if the internet didn't make me watch the show ever. So when this happens, this this weird thing where like Arcane is the same thing. The legal, I don't know anything about League of Legends. I was never going to watch Arcane on my own. The internet made me watch Arcane. The internet made me watch Cyberpunk. Now, because I never played both of these games, I have no interest in them. And like, I never plan to play these games even after watching their animes and like enjoying their animes or whatever. But my point is, Whenever the internet makes me watch something, despite the fact that I might have high expectations because the internet is saying it's the best thing ever, it's mind blowing. I make my mind up at the end of it, regardless of what the internet, like if I go in with low expectations, like how Kenny did, or if I go in with high expectations because of the internet, like I usually end up doing because the internet just does that, even though I'm starting to get used to it now to the point where I don't really believe the internet yeah. anymore, but like yeah, no matter yeah. what expectations I go in with, if it is good to me, I'm going to say it's good to me and I won't let my expectations or the internet's expectations that they try yeah, to instill yeah. on me affect my view of it. And a you're good, a good critic then, that means you're a good critic. Yeah, I'm unbiased. And a good yeah. a good example of that is the show a Queen's the Queen's Gambit. It was a show that the internet like went crazy Walter about Mother. and I haven't it, seen it yet. It's really oh my god. So to me, that is a 10 out of 10 show. Like that has no Damn. that is no cap. Like I think that show is actually perfect. I don't think it needs any like it doesn't need a season 2. I don't think it's anything that they need to improve on. I think that is a perfect show. It is 10 episodes, but obviously they're an hour long. And like, it is perfect. Like, I think the Queen's Gambit is actually perfect. I think it also has Damn. like, I think it has one of those scores, like 100 on Rotten Tomatoes or whatever, some crazy high score. And it, it's 100% deserved in my opinion. But it's a show that the internet, like definitely hyped up in a nerd world. Like everyone hyped it up a lot. And I was afraid a little bit going into it because they do this a lot and then it's not as good. But, yeah. But that show, to me, is actually a 10 out of 10 show, regardless of what the internet said. Whereas like Cyberpunk, I don't think is a hundred. Like, and I, I feel that way, no matter like, oh, expectations high or low. I, I always just go in and like, at the end of it, I make up my own mind, regardless yeah. of what the internet is saying. Like the internet is, everyone's saying like, oh, Cyberpunk's the best show I've ever seen, the best anime in the last 10 years. I will blatantly just say like, y'all are cap. Like that's not real. It's just not that. Like it's not that. It is just not yeah. that. Y'all yeah, are being, right. being ridiculous. Dude, I feel like um, it's like Kenny is is more into superheroes than me, and like I'm watching The Boys, and I think like I fucking I think it's one of the best shows I've ever seen. 
and like Kenny. I think I like it more than Kenny, but that's just kind of crazy. I mean, you, you do. Know what like, I, mean? I think we we did an episode on the boys, but I think the boys is good. Me too. My, you know, I just I think it's cool. Like, I don't. Yeah, man, that's crazy. I don't think but it's yeah, great. I, what's I interesting it's is so that good, man. Silverman also thinks that like he. He's like, like, it's the like best show that came out in the last couple of years. And I'm like, I don't, yeah. like, I think The Boys is fine. I don't think it's the yeah, best it's show. It's a cool show. To that's me, nuts. it's not, that's I never nuts. watched The Boys and said, this is the best show on TV. Like, I never. I'm I'm starting it, to, like, watching, I'm almost on season three. I'm I'm really starting to get that vibe, man. Like, this, this is one of the best shows I feel like I've well, seen in a long time. Because, like, I was, I, I was told by a friend to watch The Boys. And like, uh, by right, the way, I fucking hate superheroes. I, I mean, not I, like I, I, I'm not a fan either. I'm not a big fan either. But I was watching The Boys, right? And I watched the first episode. The first episode hit me really awkwardly. And uh, spoiler, if you haven't, it's the first episode, so it's not really a spoiler. But um, basically, the guy's girlfriend, yeah, dies, like disintegrated by just, a, basically gets yeah, fast disintegrated guy, by the fastest guy on the, on the earth. He just runs through her. Yeah. And for me, that instance right there just affected me in a way where I just didn't want to watch the show anymore. I did not like. Like I almost feel like it, so it did its fucking on. job because like that's how I, I felt. I was like, yeah. it, was, it felt so real. Like, uh, like no, we're not, we're not gonna go too much it on it. Felt wrong. Because, it just felt wrong. Just like, like too the, much. Like, it's like, too, like too manipulative much early. or something. Yeah. I just, just want to say that I think it's cool. It's one of the things that's cool is like Fraser saying Silverman thinks it's an amazing show. Cheyenne, you think it's like amazing top tier. And then like, yeah. I think it's cool. I think Frazier just kind of thinks it's cool. Yeah, I'm going to say uh, me and Ken are going to say everybody, everybody experiences shit and different. You know? It's just interesting. Yeah. How like, like, like some people might really cyberpunk for somehow connected to them in a way where it, it, to them, it's the best anime. Uh, it's not to me, but I do like it a lot. Yes. And I appreciate like it. it a lot. Not a lot, but I like it enough to where I would watch it. If they did another season of it and it just happened. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I will yeah. watch I will con- they had- Oh shit, go ahead. I this is a show that I will continue to watch. Like if, if they came yeah, out yeah. with more seasons, I like Arcane, I I'm gonna watch season two of Arcane. Like when 100%. that League of Legends show comes out, we will be watching it. We will be doing a podcast episode on it. Like this show, if it had a season two, I will hundred percent be on board and I'll watch it and I'll probably watch every season unless it started to get really bad. I'll, I'll watch it because Bill wants to watch it, but like for my own, like I probably think you're pretty much done. Real talk, yeah. real talk. I'm but, watching it by myself. I can't watch it with you. Wasn't that bad? Because you want to enjoy it. Uh, uh, you're not going to live the whole enjoy. time. You were so you're like, uh, yeah. He just going to move and bring the fucking no, I think that's damn Debbie Downer. There will not be a season two for me then. But, All right, um, and, but when it comes down to like like season two, I'll watch it. But if it was a prequel about like Maine and the crew, I'm all in. Yeah, like yeah, a- yeah. all in. Um, another thing too, like about the League of Legends, you know a sh- I know a show is good when my mom watches it. No shit. She That's watched wild. League of Legends, <laughs> and it's like whoa. I need. I should watch League of Legends. She's watching it. <laughs> yeah, it's still so surprising to me. Like shit, like Squid Game. Like Squid Game just seems like something Squid, that would be the small and niche. It. Dude, it seems like it'd be like this small niche thing that would never explode. Like I don't know yeah. how the fuck. It's like an anime, but a live action show, and the whole fucking world watched it. Like, why it's did just, the world get good taste out of nowhere? Like, you're supposed to be watching. No, I don't CSI think it's, it's not that they got good taste. Like, it's just it's all marketing. Squid Game somehow, some way, got marketed. Whether whether it was word of mouth or whatever. But it, it just came out at, at a time and people talked about it. And so people watched it. It's all um, about, like Kenny said, it is marketing. It's like all this viral shit now, right? Like Twitter, yeah. like everything goes viral. It, it starts trending on Twitter. And that's all it takes for a show. Like right now, the Jeffrey Dahmer show is the biggest show in the world right now. Like, do you understand that anything can be viral at this point? Everything can be trendy. Everything can, like the Jeffrey Dahmer show. I heard I heard that show is not good, by the way. That's what I heard, at least. I don't know. Um, and or not not good and not accurate. That's what I've at least. My I watched right. the whole thing in like two days. I think that the show is feel? fine. Like I get what they were trying to do with it, but that's a topic for another episode. Yeah, yeah. but like yeah, yeah. my whole the the point is the culture of the world right now with the internet and just like Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that is like once the, whoever is in charge of making things trend decides that like they got enough money from the people who made the show to make it yeah. trend. That's just what we're going to all. That's be all it takes. Like they, We're being controlled, essentially, is what I think. Like I, I really do. Like not even on some conspiracy theory shit, but I just feel like <laughs> I'm not the only human being out there who's watching these shows because the internet is basically making you. Mm. Yeah, it's 
I mean, that's all it is. It like, goes viral. Everybody talks about it. And that's how it's always been. Yes. The reason why pop music is pop music is because that's the music that the record labels paid for to be on the radio. And so you yeah. hear them all the yeah. time. And that's the music yeah. everybody listens to. You keep hearing it over and over again. Eventually, you start to like something that you didn't even like. Like, I hated the fucking Soldier Boy song when it first came out. Soldier Boy up in there. Whoa. Watch oh, the no. I it, it, hated that song. actually liked it. And then what happened is oh, you hear it so many now. times and you start cranking that. You no, start I heard it in there. Next thing you know, cranking, you start, start cranking a fucking knife into my neck. You That's well, good. I understand that. But guess what? The internet doesn't allow you to be a fucking person anymore. Now everything that you do yeah. is a suggestion that Google made for you. Like when you start typing something on Google, it knows what you are thinking before you finish typing it. Like it's, it's like it's, I, I it's think like the end is trying to say is that there's a little bit of an edge runner in all of us, and we're all a little bit cyberpunk on the inside. Yeah, we are. Okay. And so I think all that's right. what Fraser's trying to say. So I think I think what also he's trying to say is like we're all sheeple in a way. Yeah, it's it's just part <laughs> we're of all, it. We're all yeah, sheeple. It's the way the world works. Like it's we're just it. monkeys with clothes on. We're it's not impossible any than now anything else. to avoid it. Yeah. You think I wanted to watch a show on Jeffrey Dahmer? Like you think that two weeks ago before that show I came do? out? I watch serial killer show. All the time. I know that, you, but you're a fucking yeah, weirdo. Man, I, I, think I can't. That I, I can't can. wait. Man. Hold on, hold on. I can't wait to watch the documentary about my friend Cheyenne, the psycho that watched all the psychos. You know what I mean? Like, the yes. psycho watcher. Yes. Dude, we made a documentary and about everything. Man. Listen, just so, like, 20 years from now, right, you're mm. going to be watching, 30 years, whatever, because he, you're going to be watching a documentary about this guy, <laughs> and he basically, he kills, like, 51 people, and he's the most, like, acclaimed serial killer in the U.S., and every one of his kills... Is the style of a different serial killer. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> it's, kill. it's, based on, it's based on 51 documentaries that I've seen about serial Yeah, it's killers. like Dahmer, Zodiac, yeah. and he just like, cool kind of Sam. As bad as that is to say. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be shiny. Great. Like, I've never seen that in fiction and not real life, but like, that is a cool concept for a serial killer, but I would appreciate it if it was just fiction. Um, and my yeah, MO I, is I'll, I'll, I'll jerk think, off a little bit at every crime scene. Oh, okay. Yeah, you will. You will. At I think we can wrap there'll up. Be a, there'll be a tape of, of a voice, an, an uncle's voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this episode up, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode <laughs> on cyberpunk and not on fucking serial killing. Uh, but thank you guys so much, Bill and Cheyenne, for joining the podcast. Uh, All right, I'm, everybody have a good night as i always do before we get out of here i want to give a shout out to the people over at our patreon uh it is the beginning of a new month so this is a great time to subscribe to our patreon we have exclusive episodes that only release on patreon like literally those episodes are not available anywhere else uh, we drop one every month and the people in our discord actually get to like vote on what they want them to be uh so and there's also video versions of the podcast if you're interested in that as well and there's other perks so check out I'm their podcast on patreon.com. If you're interested in that type of thing, you also get access to our discord server, but without further ado, I'm going to give a shout out to Connie, Austin, Leon quest, Garen, Xavier, Hylian, TCG automotive, Dimitri Barnes, Alexander Brissett, Vinny Casello, Andre Reynolds, CJ, WK dad one Saul at Dabbers gaming cafe. Also dank ritual has been dropping some fucking fire. Their newest cloth play mat. The ivory one is actually so soft. I've been using it at locals for the last couple of weeks. It is so nice. My friend, Steve Silverman, two time YCS champion. You guys know who I'm talking about. He ordered one. The second he felt mine on Thursday at the local, like literally pulled his phone out. was like, how much? I was like, it's only like 50 bucks. And he like ordered it on the spot. And I believe our locals is going to start selling them. So just check out dankritual.com. Uh, if you're interested in like TCG accessories and stuff like that. Anyways, to continue on with the Patreon members, we got Dan Rabel, Dennis Milburn, Joseph Marcello, First to Home, Dalis Fernares, S. Akuma, Mitchell Naus, Midwest Gaming, William Shapiro, Demetrius Firdis, Vince Marquette, Dallas Bailey, Roz Weiss, Nick Stango, Scott Palera, Hanto, our two-time national champion, uh, Vincent Zen, Sarah Maria, shout out to you, uh, Sony at the uh, Sonny at the Top Cut Podcast, Alex Ahern, Philip Campa, Jalen Haskins, Arale, Melfi Slump, and Dominic Couch. Thank you guys so much for supporting the podcast. We really appreciate it. It goes a long way. And as I always say, guys, do the things that make you happy, including modifying yourselves until you become a cyber psycho. Give yourself a robo dick. <laughs> We're out of here.